Baby. 
Never say die. Never say die. All right. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, very soon, we'll be starting with the proceedings for uh, today. But, of course, we all can understand that we are a little bit behind time. Uh, we do understand that two of our directors are on their way. Uh, apparently, they've been held up in, you know, um, some other shadows. But as and when they are done, uh, they'll join us and then we'll commence uh, um, you know, um, effectively. So I understand if, if you are feeling a little bit uncomfortable, just relax. We'll start uh, very soon. And of course, we want to extend formally our apologies uh, in that um, particular respect. So maybe this is the time that we can be saying uh, some hello, highs to, you know, ourselves, you know, chatting the time away until when we start. And so apologies formally, and we'll start very soon. Thank you.
On my clock, it's 28 minutes past 11, and therefore I think it's appropriate for me to say good morning, like I earlier did. So good morning to all of us. And of course, never say die. Can, can we say that with some vigor? Never say die. Absolutely. It's my pleasure to be the uh, master of ceremony for today's event. We are here at the Civil Service Auditorium, and I believe we can all appreciate the essence of today's gathering. It's in respect of the annual general meeting of the biggest football club in the Republic of Ghana. Am I lying or it's a fact? Absolutely, and that is the reason why we have um, uh, gathered. But let me use the opportunity to once again uh, apologize for the late start of uh, proceedings, but I mean, it's, it's better late than, than, than never. So we are now uh, ready to go. But we want to be sure that in as much as we have a huge profile of dignitaries here, we also have divine presence in our midst. And that is why Belinda, who happens to be the finance officer, will do us the honor of the opening prayer. Please put your hands together for Belinda as she does us the honor of the opening prayer. Let us pray. Our help is in the name of the Lord who made heaven and earth. Father Jesus, we thank you for today. We thank you for a gathering like this. We ask, O oh Lord God, that anything that we are coming to do here will be successful. We pray committing all those who are yet to come into your presence. We pray, O oh Lord, that you bring them safely so that we can have a successful AGM to the benefit of our great club. These and many more blessings we ask through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. All right, thank you very much, uh, Belinda. Now that we are rest assured that we have divine company in our midst, I think it's only appropriate that we now went ahead to uh, also introduce uh, the very individuals who are going to steer the conversation uh, for today. I'm going to start off with the executive board chairman. Togbe Afede, the 14th, is the Agbo Bumefia of the Asogli State also the president of the Voto Regional House of Chiefs. He was the immediate past president of the National House of Chiefs as well. Now, he's also 
a business executive and the founder of SAS Finance Group Limited and Strategic Initiative Limited. He's an investment banker with experience spanning over 28 uh, years. That's quite um, a long time, if you ask me. He holds a Bachelor of Science degree in Business Administration from the University of Ghana Business School, Legon, and also he holds an MBA from the prestigious Yale University of Management in the US of A. He serves on boards of Aluex Limited, World Trade Centers Association, New York, African World Airlines Limited, Ensign College of Public Health, Pioneer, Pioneer Kitchenware Limited, SAS Finance Group Limited, Strategic Initiative Limited, and then Sunon Asogli Power Limited as well. Ladies and gentlemen, the Executive Board Chairman, Togbe Afede, the 14th. Right. I think it can, be, it can be louder. Can we just do it a second time? Absolutely. We also do have in our company a man who is a renowned businessman with technical knowledge in football and has supported the club in various capacities. He first joined the board in 2005 and played pivotal roles in all activities of the club in that respect. In 2008, and 2009, he was the vice chairman of the interim management committee that won the Globe Premier League title. He was once in charge of the club's youth development, and also once upon a time, he was a member, an executive member of the Ghana Football Association. Frank Nelson in Woklo. Please, a round of applause for Frank. I uh, would be expecting Dr. Nyaho Nyaho Tamaklo to join us, uh, and we, uh, we understand this on this. We ask him when he joins, you would hear uh, the lofty profile that he carries as well. But let's now move on uh, to a former member of the Ghana judiciary and a keen fan of the club. She's also a member of the Council of Patrons and a representative of the Hearts Ladies Club on the board. She plays various benevolent roles to keep the ladies' club vibrant, vibrant, I beg your pardon. And I think at this point, we can all guess uh, who it is already. Her leadership, Ivy Howard Mills. A round of applause. We also do have in our company today uh, a man who has more than 24 years of experience, actually, in auditing financial statement reporting, fund management, and investment banking. Thomas is now focused on pension as a financial tool for economic and social development so as to improve the standard of living of workers who retire. He was also the assistant financial controller and the vice president at Data Bank Group of Companies, the executive director and general manager of SAS Finance Group of Companies, and then also the managing director of defunct Beige Capital Assets Management Limited. The finance guy, as I heard someone referring to him, Thomas Kwesi Esso. Please put your hands together for uh, Thomas. <laughs> Honorable was Ghana's Deputy Communications Minister and a Member of Parliament for the La Dadek Kutupon constituency between the period 2016 to 2020. He is a football administrator and has vast knowledge in strategic management and finance. He owns Valex Leasing Company Limited, a leading equipment company in Ghana. Once upon a time, ladies and gentlemen, he was the chief executive of the club, and this was way back in 2008. Honorable Vincent Odote Soa. Alaji Imoro Brimer is a retired banker and the club's representative on the Professional League Board and a former National Chapters Committee chairman. He's a business investor and holds directorate roles in numerous companies, which include Press Time Investment Company Limited, Community Up Up Uplift NGO, Sky Gypsy Travel and Tours, as well as Sky Gypsy Construction Limited. Alaji Imoro Brimer is also in our midst today. And um, we do understand that Professor uh, Kofi Kumado and um, Ahasan Andani, Alaja Hassan Andani, sorry, 
uh, would not be joining us, and they have um, accordingly um, given us the apologies in that particular respect. So, ladies and gentlemen, of course, if you are seeing the faces here, if you know them already, now you know their profiles, and you know what they would be doing. Of course, chaired by the executive board chairman. Can we do it once again for them? This time around, a bigger one. And now that everybody has been introduced, maybe we would have to charge the atmosphere a little with that anthem that always connotes victory, that always uh, can keep our bloods boiling. Where is Mamaga? I hear she's going to lead the charge for us to sing the anthem of the biggest and the most influential uh, football club in Ghana. Please put your hands together for Mamaga as she steps, you know. Already she's well represented in the colors of the club and is going to take us home. Phobia. Oh, why is so quiet? Oh, say, yeah. Oh, say. Please, can we be outstanding? Let us charge. Oh, say, yeah. Oh, say, I. Phobia, oh, say. Oh, say. Oh, say. As of folks, as of folks, and on as of folks, as of folks, as of folks, and on a Yamuaminawa Kaja talk me up at the Yinofe as of folks, machine bonnet. Kuni yeli, kuni yeli po. House of folks, machine boneyo. Glorious house of folk, our mother club, our father club. Red, yellow, and blue is our colors. Beautiful and glorious house of folk. Red, go. Glorious house of Let's go. We will build a great foundation with our colors red, yellow, and blue. House 11. Oh, house 11. Oh, thank House 11. Oh, arrows. I rose, I rose. Be quiet and cheer us up. We are the famous house of folks. We never again. House eleven is a house eleven. Oh, house eleven. I rose, I rose, I rose. Be quiet and cheer us up. We are the famous house of folks. We never say die. Beep, beep, beep. Ladies and gentlemen, a big hand for Mamaka. Do it, do it better for her. I mean, it's inspiring us um, at this moment and then, of course, stirring the mood. Still on the introductions, uh, Eleanor Quay is um, seated up here as well. She happens to be the uh, company secretary. Please, um, Eleanor, a wave if we can see you. Please, which are together for Eleanor. And then, uh, my name is Pakwisi Shandoff, like I earlier indicated. I'm a writer a corporate MC and um, a broadcast journalist. I'll be moderating the proceedings as and when my services are needed. But right now, I'll leave you in the company of the executive board chair for the business of the day. Thank you.
Phobia. Phobia. Good morning, distinguished ladies and gentlemen. I welcome you all to the ninth annual general meeting of your beloved sporting club, Accra Arts of Oak, which is being held both physically and virtually. I now declare the meeting open and I call on AB Business Consultancy, our company secretary, to read the notice convening the meeting. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chair. So the notice of the general annual meeting can be found on page six of the annual report 2021-2022. And I read, notice of the general annual meeting. Notice is hereby given that the fifth annual general meeting of the members of Accra Hats of Folk Sporting Club will be held both physically and virtually via Zoom on Wednesday, October 11th, 2023 at the Civil Servants Auditorium, Ministries Accra at 10 a.m. to transact the following business. Ordinary business. To receive and consider and adapt the audited financial statement for the year ended June 30th, 2022 together with the reports of the directors and auditors thereon. Two, to re-elect all the directors. Three, to fix directors' remuneration for the ensuring year. Four, to renew auditors' mandate. Five, to confirm the remuneration of the auditors for the year ended June 30th, 2023. And then six, any other business. Special business to consider the adoption of the new right issue, dated this 18th day of September, 2023, by order of the board, ABA Business Consultancy, Company Secretary. Thank you. Thank you very much, Elena of uh, AB Consultancy, AB Business Consultancy. Before we proceed, may I invite you again to take us through the procedures to be used during this hybrid meeting. Thank you very much, Mr. Chair. I would like to draw shareholders' attention to the following procedures to be used during this virtual and physical meeting. So for those online, to vote, you, have, you kindly have to raise your hand to either second a motion or ask a question. To ask a question, kindly raise your hand and wait to be called. So for us physically here, you raise your hand and then you wait for the coordinators, that's the ushers going round to call you before you can ask your questions. If you are using a computer, click on participant and then click raise hand at the bottom of the participant dialog box. On your mobile phone, tap the three dots labeled more. On the far right of the control bar, raise right, raise, tap raise hand to raise your hand. You will be unmuted after which you should mention your name State whether you are a shareholder or a proxy, after which you may proceed to perform the action for which your hand was raised. Two, to use the polling feature to vote for or against a motion. To vote, you raise your hands and wait for it to be counted before you put your hands down. On both the computer and mobile phone, when it is time to vote, the poll will appear on your screen. Select your preferred option for, against, or abstain 
to cast your vote. A few minutes will be allowed for each resolution to enable participation shareholders to vote. Voting will be done in real time, and the results will be shared for all to see at the end of each vote. Once the voting is declared closed on a specific resolution, you can no longer access or vote on that resolution. The polling feature will be used for voting on each resolution. You can only vote when the chairman declares the voting open on a specific resolution. Three, to ask a question. Kindly raise your hand to be called to ask your questions. To those on the virtual platform, kindly vote, kindly post your questions in the chat session, which will be read out to the board to be answered. The instruction on how to raise your hand to either second a motion or ask a question, as well as how to use the polling feature to vote for or against a motion can also be found on page four of the annual report. Thank you very much, Mr. Chair. Thank you very much. Thank you very much again. I will uh, now read the chairman's statement, which can be found on page 10 of the annual report. Before I proceed, uh, may I apologize for some of the typos you would have seen in uh, the document, the annual report. For example, in my case, my school is Yale University and a school of management, not Yale, not, not Yale University School of Management. There are a few similar typos for which uh, we are sorry. Now may I proceed? On behalf of the Board of Directors, I wish to express our regret for our inability to hold an annual jam meeting for some time now. This was due, as uh, many of you already know, to the challenges that have confronted the domestic football sector in the past few years. And you recall the rankation that uh, resulted from the ANAS expositions and also the effects of COVID on the game. The purpose of this meeting is to present to you a class of folk sporting club annual report and financial statements for the year ended June 30, 2022. Inform stakeholders about the current state of the club and give you an insight into our plans for the future. I'm happy to say that uh, our accounting department has been up to date and uh, the latest accounts ending June 2023 are current, currently being audited. And the plan by the board is to hold an annual, annual general meeting again very soon, very early in the new year to look at the latest accounts, that's accounts ending June 30, 20, 23, and that should make us, I'm sure, the most up to date in this sector in this country. On behalf of the board of directors, I welcome you all and thank you for coming. Overview of 2021 2022 football season. Having performed so well in winning the double in the previous year, the expectation of all stakeholders was that the team would defend successfully the league trophy especially, and perform well in the ensuing CAF Champions League. Given these expectations, 
the board supported the recruitment of experienced players like Glass Nawako and Kofi Koji in a bid to strengthen the squad. No changes were made to a technical team led by Coach Samuel Buedu because of the confidence the managers of the club had in them. A three point season. A three week precision campaign was sanctioned by the board to provide the appropriate environment that would enable technical team to properly prepare the team for the season ahead, especially for the CAF Champions League. All the logistical requirements of the team were also provided. Despite all the above, the team failed to live up to the expectation of stakeholders and the board at large. They failed to glitter in the league and neither did they perform in the CAF competition. Despite a good start with a 2-0 home win against Kamsar of Guinea, followed by a 1-0 win over Suara FC of uh, Algeria in the CAF Champions League to open the activity for a year, the team could not make it to the group stage of the competition and were relegated to the CAF Confederation Cup competition for which, from which also we exited at the qualifying stage. The team's performance at the domestic league suffered from the loss of confidence that resulted from the above failures. That notwithstanding, they managed to retain the FA Cup as a consolation giving us another opportunity to represent the nation in the CAF Confederations Cup competition during the next year. Junior teams and academy project. The long-term goal of the World Directors of the club is to develop talented young players to feed the senior team and support the development of football in the country generally To achieve this, the club, as you are aware, is putting up an academy which is at an advanced stage of completion. The academy upon completion will be able to house all the youth players of different ages and categories and have football pitches and other facilities that will be available for rental by other clubs and organizations. And many of you are already aware that uh, uh, ours is more than a football academy because we have, among others, an 18-hole mini um, golf course. We have ten, two tennis courts, a basketball court, and a volleyball court. And of course, we have the gym, a uh, reasonably good size swimming pool and etc. So it means that uh, we we'll have facilities for those learning, for, learning to play football and those learning to play golf, tennis, basketball and etc. And of course facilities are available for officials of companies that would come to rent our facilities for their preparations towards uh, various soccer competitions. For now, the club continues to maintain its under-20 team, Aras, which plays in a greater Accra Division II league. But again, this report is a bit outdated because uh, currently we also have uh, um, the Royal Oaks, and we've acquired, as you know, a female club that we now call the Oaks. So we don't only have a class of folk, we also have uh, Auras, Royal Oaks, and the Oaks. The Oaks FC is a female team. The report that will come with, uh, my statement that will come with the next uh, account will be more up to date. The rights issue. 
the construction of the project at Pobiman, in addition to the huge operational cost of running the club, have had a negative impact on the club's finances. The traditional source of revenue to the club, that's great proceeds, has been very negligible compared to the huge running cost. Other revenue sources, including sponsorships, have not been as, as good as expected, and above factors have worsened the club's reliance on SAS for survival. Against this backdrop, the board sees additional chef rotation as necessary for boosting the club's finances. During the 2017 AGM, the board announced its intention to undertake a rights issue to raise funds. The SIs have been frustrated by various unfortunate developments in the football sector that had led to the disruption of our league at various times. We shall soon come up with a roadmap for the SIs and therefore urge you to prepare to patronize the issue. The proceeds from the share issue will be used to fund, among others, loan repayments and new investments in infrastructure. You would have noticed that the club is heavily in debt, but our strategy is to ensure that the rights issue, we have a very clean balance sheet. The club will virtually be virtually debt free after the rights issue. Commercial activities and sponsorship. As reported in the chairman's statement in the Accra Suffolk Annual Report and Finance Assessment for the year ended June 2021, I'm sure you all have copies of the previous year's accounts as well. Let me also say that accounts of the other years since our last AGM are available for those who will be interested in looking at them. The board resumed the commercial department, sorry, the board revamped the commercial department with the recruitment of three experienced marketing personnel. This was in line with the board's vision to explore all commercial avenues available in the football industry to generate adequate revenue for the running of the club. Before then, the club had secured a partnership deal with Star Assurance and Star Life insurance companies under which the club earns a percentage of all insurance premiums paid under the club's scheme. The company provides the club with a 45-seater Hyundai bus as part of the partnership agreement. Goel Limited has also been of tremendous support to the club as a sponsor and so has been soon on a Sokoli Power which is the Russian company of SAS. SAS has for many years been the backbone of the club in terms of financial support through loans and sponsorship. Update on 2022-23 football season. I wish this opportunity to delve into the current football season, which was halfway at the time of this report. But of course, this refers to the season that uh, has just has passed. Despite the below par performance of the team during the 2021-22 season, the ball still maintained the technical setup led by coach Samuel Buedu, assisted by Eric Amponsa and Hamsa Ob Obeng. However, things were seemingly getting worse, leaving the management with no option than to mutually terminate the contract with Samuel Buedu. This also led to a termination of the contracts of his subordinates or his other subordinates. Subsequently, management brought in an assistant coach in the person of Samuel Oklu to hold a fort, supported by Enoch Jordan Daite as a physical trainer and Richard Opong as goalkeeper coach. Samuel Oklu took charge of a few matches prior to the appointment of coach Slavko Matic as the head coach. 
at the time of this report and after five matches under the new technical analysts, the team's performance showed initial tremendous improvements, vindicating management decision to change the technical leadership of the team. Now the Common Value Club Alliance. As you are aware, the Common Value Club Alliance, Bakras of Folk of Ghana, TSG Hoffenheim of Jeff Germany, and FC Cincinnati is still in place. I'm happy to inform you that a lot of progress is being made in cementing cooperation among, this, among the three clubs. Representatives of Hoffenheim and Cincinnati have visited Ghana and the three parties are in regular contact. I'll provide a comprehensive update in my next report to shareholders. But let me emphasize that uh, um, this has been a quite a special arrangement that has seen us engaging on a weekly basis. It's not something just for the for the for the uh, for our lockers or for our tabletops. But there's active cooperation, exchange of ideas uh, between the three clubs. We meet virtually every Friday, and uh, all the top executives of these clubs, including the two um, co-founders of Cincinnati, have visited uh, 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 Ghana. And I'm also happy that the two, the two partners are doing very well in their league now. You know, Cincinnati has won a, um, the MSL Eastern Conference. And Hoffenheim has had a good start to the current uh, uh, Bundes, Bundesliga League. So uh, I'm happy that uh, they are doing well. And we also expect to emulate their performance. Well, I think, I think all is in place, though. I mean, the, the board has done a very good job in the recruitment that we've made, and I'm, I'm sure you all have access to that. There's a slow start. You recall that in the year we won, 2021, the, the, the start was even worse than this. So we are very confident we'll recover and then uh, meet the expectation of not only ourselves, but uh, the entire house family. Now, financial performance. The year under review has not departed from the previous pattern of losses. This has meant continuous dependence on loans from SAS. On the revenue side, revenues grew from 3.1 million Ghana cities in 2020-2021 to 4.1 million Ghana cities in 21-22, representing 26.9% increase. The main contributors to revenue growth are match proceeds and JSA sales. The breakdown of the income for the period is as follows. March proceeds, 1.17 million, up from 337,000 in 2021. JSA sales, 501,000, thereabouts, up from 199,000 previous year. Sponsorship, 2.17 million, up from 1.6 million the previous year. Gain on disposal of intangible assets, zero, compared to 1 million the previous year. Other revenue, 190,000 in 2022, compared to none the previous year. Direct expenses increased from 3.679 million in 2021 to 7.7 .7 million in 2022, representing 109.3% increase. General and admin expenses increased from 1.8 million in 2021 to 2. 0.2 million in 2021-2023, sorry, 2021-22, resulting in a 17.4% upward change. Annual finance costs increased due to capitalization of unpaid interest as well as additional loans. The community effect of this was a loss before other comprehensive income of uh, 25 million Ghana cities. 
compared to 10.6 million in 2020-21 financial year, being a 138.9% increase in our losses. Total assets stood at 26.27 million compared to 14.97 million at the end of 2021, an increase of 75.6%. This was, sorry, there was a 65.9% increase in total liabilities from 55.7 million at the end of 2020-21 to 92 million at the end of 2021-22 as a result of the ongoing academy project. Total shareholders funds increased by 62%. One of the typos again, anyway. Total shareholders funds actually decreased by 62% from a negative 40 million at the end of the 2021 financial year to 66.2 million at the end of the financial year ending June 30, 2022. I'm sure many of you have questions about this, but to the extent that we're not doing well in terms of gate proceeds, to the extent that sponsorships have been difficult to come by in terms of uh, um, size, and of course, to the extent that we had to keep running the club, paying salaries, and more importantly, investing in infrastructure you would expect this kind of uh, outing. But we are very confident about two things. One, our ability to change the balance sheet to the rice issue. We're going to strategically plan a rice issue to clear all of our debt so that parts of will become virtually the, the free, which is quite uncommon in football. But we also look forward to commercializing the facilities at Kobe Man. The four football pitches will be commercialized. Already there have been approaches from fair division clubs who want to adopt Pobiman for their league matches. We'll, 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 we'll commercialize the mini golf courts, the tennis courts, the basketball courts, and et cetera. And we expect that this would make Pobiman a net contributor to our, our financial uh, situation or our operational uh, re, uh, results. It will mean a strong management, both at the level of uh, House of Hope and also at the academy. So there are two things that are very important in our financings or financial strategy. One, clean up of our books to the rights issue. And secondly, commercialization of Pobi Man to ensure that we can earn more revenues than expenses in, uh, in future years. And that is something we are very committed to. By way of conclusion, I want to thank my colleague board members, our sponsors, and our supporters for their support. I ask that we all come together and with unflinching loyalty, help push our great club to prominence on the continent. On behalf of the board of directors and management, please accept my sincere thanks once again for joining us in this meeting. And finally, once again, my apologies for a late start to the meeting. Honorable Odote, for example, is, is not, is indisposed, but managed to get here. Uh, uh, board member Frank had other meetings, but still managed to be here. Apologies from uh, Dr. Nyaun Yotamekulo, who had to address a press conference that has already been planned. 
and who was hoping that I could join us before we close from here. But sadly, the two programs coincided. And unfortunately, the other one could not be rescheduled. Thank you all very much for your patience and for your attention. Thank you. Uh, before I proceed, uh, ladies and gentlemen, let me also remind us that uh, another future source of income is our beautiful uh, head office, which we expect to be completed uh, before, the, before the end of November, probably in time for us to celebrate it on our birthday. Those of you who I mean, the, the club boasts an incredible uh, amount of infrastructure. Apart from the commercial center, from where we operate now, we also have the brand new head office that has replaced our old secretariat. And uh, all who have come to visit us have been, have been very much full of admiration for what we've been able to achieve. Part of the strategy in doing all of this is to, is to rebrand the club to make it more attractive to corporate you know, sponsors. We expect that we can, we, can, we, can have a, we can sell naming rights to the academy, apart from commercializing the various facilities in there. So the academy should be able to earn income for us. So apart from the general sponsorship of a class of old, we already have started a search for you know, uh, the sponsor for the academy who would earn naming rights. And as I said, uh, the head office itself, you know, because House of Folk will only need maybe the top floor, given the amount of space at the, at the, at the commercial center and the amount of space at um, Pobiman. We expect that the commercial center would only house commercial operations. Most of the administrative functions will be performed at uh, uh, Pobiman, and head office operations will be limited to the top floor of the new head office building, meaning there's a lot of space to rent out and therefore making the head office building also a revenue generator for the club. Thank you very much for your attention again. The report of directors can be found on page 13 of the annual report. And with your consent, I suggest that report be taken as read. May I now call on uh, our auditors, prior uh, mayor and company, now called Pagderon and Associates, to read their report. <laughs> and again, I said it that uh, uh, all the other accounts are available for those who are interested, can approach the secretariat for copies or to read um, um, for, 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 for more information. But we're limiting a lot of the conversation today to the latest accounts that have been audited. And as I said again, the auditors are working very hard to complete the audit of the latest financial year 2022-23, which ended last June 30th. We are hoping that the audit can be completed by the end of the year so we can have another AGM very early in the new year, which will make us extremely current. You know, under plans to uh, um, make the Premier League autonomous, okay, there are strict rules of um, financial reporting and also strict rules of financial fair play. And those are going to impose a lot of responsibility on clubs. 
and we are very much on track to position ourselves to meeting the reporting requirements. For instance, if it is required that audited accounts are prepared within four months of the financial year end, has to focus in a position to meet that kind of that kind of obligation. Okay. And also the cleanup of our books through the rice issue would also position us to meet financial fair play obligations. And let me just mention before the auditor comes in. Our establishment of the female team, the various projects we put in place have all qualified us under you know, cover rooms, particularly for public consideration to participate in the Africa Super League. Thank you very much. So, yeah. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. The Independent Auditor's Report to the members of Accra Hearts of Oak Sporting Club Limited. My name is Ni Adovandapoi, Senior Partner, Park Deron and Associates. Opinion. We have audited the financial statement of Accra Hearts of Oak Sporting Club Limited, which comprises the statement of comprehensive income Statement of changes in equity. Statement of financial position as of 30th June, 2022. Statement of cash flows for the year then ended. And a summary of significant accounting policies and other explanatory notes. In our opinion, the accompanying financial statements present fairly in all material respects the financial position of the company as a 30th June 2022, and of its financial performance and its cash flows for the year then ended, in accordance with the International Financial Reporting Standards, IFRS for SMEs, and in a manner required by the Companies Act 2019, Act 992, and any other relevant local legislation. Basis of, for opinion. We have conducted our audit in accordance with international standards on auditing. Our responsibilities under those standards are further described in the auditor's responsibilities for the audit of the financial statement section of our report. We are independent of the company in accordance with International Ethics Standards Board for Accountants Code of for Accountants Code of Ethics for Professional Accountants, i.e. SBA Code. And we have fulfilled our other ethical responsibilities in accordance with the code. We believe that the audit evidence we have obtained is sufficient and appropriate to provide a basis for our opinion. Key audit matters. Key audit matters are those matters that in our professional judgment were of most significance in our audit of the financial statements for the current period. These matters were addressed in the context of our audit of the financial statements as a whole and informing our opinion thereon. And we do not provide a separate opinion on those matters. You have heard extensively reported by the board Executive Chair, the going concern matters, and therefore I will not comment on that further. We have determined, therefore, that there are no key audit matters to communicate in our report. The directors are responsible for the other information. The information comprises the information included in the annual report, of which you have copies, but does not include 
the financial statement and our auditor's opinion thereon. Our opinion on the financial statement does not cover the other information, and we do not and will not express any form of assurance. Conclusion thereon. In connection with our audit of the financial statement, our responsibility is to read the other information and in so doing, consider whether the other information is materially inconsistent with the financial statement or our knowledge obtained in the audit or otherwise appears to be materially misstated. If based on the work we have performed, we conclude that there is a material misstatement of this other information, we are required to report that fact. We have nothing to report in this regard. Responsibilities of the directors. The directors are responsible for the preparation and fair presentation of these financial statements in accordance with IFRS for SMEs and in a manner required by the Companies Act 2019, Act 992, and any other relevant local legislation. And for such internal controls as the board of directors determine is necessary to enable the preparation and fair presentation of financial statements that are free from material misstatement, whether due to fraud or error. In preparing the financial statements, the board of directors are responsible for assessing the company's ability to continue as a going concern disclosing as applicable matters relating to going concern and using going concern basis of accounting unless the board of directors either intend to liquidate the company or seize operations or have no realistic alternative but to do so. The board of directors is responsible for overseeing financial reporting process. Auditors' responsibilities for the audit of the financial statements. Our objectives are to obtain reasonable assurance about whether the financial statements as a whole are free from material misstatement, whether due to fraud or error, and to issue an auditor's report that includes our opinion. Reasonable assurance is a high level of assurance but it's not a guarantee that an audit conducted in accordance with international standards on auditing will always detect a material misstatement when it exists. Misstatements can arise from fraud or error and considered material if individually or in aggregate, they could reasonably be expected to influence the economic decisions of users on the basis of these financial statements. As part of an audit, in accordance with the international standards on auditing, we exercise professional judgment and maintain professional skepticism throughout the audit. We also identify and assess the risk of material misstatements of the financial statements, whether due to fraud or error, design and perform audit procedures responsive to those risks and obtain audit evidence that is sufficient and appropriate to provide a basis for our opinion. The risk of not detecting a material misstatement resulting from fraud is higher than one resulting from error, as fraud may involve collusion, forgery, intentional omissions, misrepresentations, or the override of internal control. Obtain an understanding of internal control relevant to the audit in order to design audit procedures that are appropriate in the circumstance, but not for the purpose of expressing an opinion on the effectiveness of the company's internal control. Evaluate the appropriateness of the accounting policies used and the reasonableness of accounting estimates and related disclosures made by the board. 
conclude on the appropriateness of the board the board's use of going concern basis of accounting and based on the audit of the evidence obtained whether a material uncertainty exists related to events or conditions that may cast significant doubt on the company's ability to continue as a going concern. If we conclude that the, a material uncertainty exists, we are required to draw attention in our auditor's report to the related disclosures in the financial statements. Or if such disclosures are inadequate to modify our opinion, our conclusions are based on the audit of evidence obtained up to the date of our auditor's report. However, future events or conditions may cause the company to cease operations as a going concern. Evaluate the overall presentation, presentation structure and content of the financial statement, including the disclosures and whether the financial statements represent the underlying transactions and events in a manner that achieves fair presentation. We communicate with the board of directors regarding, among other matters, the plan scope and timing of the audit and significant audit findings, including any significant deficiencies in internal control that we identify during our audit. Report on other legal and regulatory requirements. The Companies Act 2019, Act 992, requires that in carrying out an, our audit, we consider and report on the following matters. We confirm that we have obtained all the information and explanations which, to the best of our knowledge and belief, were necessary for the purposes of our audit. In our opinion, proper books of accounts have been kept and the statement of financial position and statement of comprehensive income, statement of changes in equity, agree with the books of accounts. The engagement partner on this audit resulting in, in, in this independent auditor's report is Edmond van der Poy. Signed, Park Deron and Associates, Chartered Accountants, 17 July, 2023. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you very much, Mr. Edmond uh, Van Apoy. Thank you so much. Uh, let me say that uh, um, auditors have been very, very good, you know, um, um, uh, at their work, ensuring that they've been able to audit all our accounts up to date and are currently auditing the accounts for the financial year that ended only a few months ago. That is uh, June 30, 2023, which assures that we'll be as current as any, any, any good company. You know, and, and, and so let's, let's hear it for our, our people, please. I'm, I'm sorry, my, I'm also a bit under the weather a lot of stress over the past uh, few weeks for my celebrations, you know, and so my voice is not as good as uh, it normally would be. So you bear with me, please. Thank you. Now, before proceeding with the agenda of the meeting, I know you definitely have uh, some questions and comments. So questions and our comments on that report are now welcome. And I'll request that such uh, comments and questions are limited to the accounts presented. General questions relating to the company's business will be welcome before the end of the meeting. So for now, you are going to be invited to ask questions on the financial um, statements and also on the uh, Director's reports. So, are there any questions on the annual report? Any financial statements? 
And please can remember to use the procedures previously highlighted by the company's secretary representative to raise your hand and ask your question, please. So question time. Thank you. And please remember to uh, call your name and then, uh, you know, Um, thank you very much, um, Tefilo Stete. Um, actually, um, from the chairman's report and the auditor's report, um, that is the financial statement for 21-22, um, I, can, I can see some changes. I don't know if um, everyone is me. Um, on page 12, the chairman's report did mention of administrative expenses of 1848198 to 2169320. That is on page 12. Yes, page 12. Administrative expenses increased from 1848198 to 2169320. But on page 19, that is on the financial statement, administrative expenses 2021 is 1620466, and 22 is 2150125, a huge difference of about 227732 um, Ghana City, with um, there will be more explanation. On page 19, that is the financial statement for 2021-22. Page 19, um, administrative expenses. It is 1620466, but um, chairman's report was 1848980. And if you look at page 18 of the 2020-2021, um, 2021 was 1848198. So I just want to ask the auditors the difference why we had 1620466 here. Hello? Okay. What I can say at the, at the quick glance, okay, we have gone through all these numbers many, many times. There are some of the, some of the figures in my report, what I read, okay, that were not in what you saw in uh, page 19. For instance, some of the other expenses there, like, for example, audit fees. Is that it? Is it audit fees? You know, we're not, we're, we're standing alone in the, in the table on page 19. Mm -hmm. Are you with me? I'm with you, sir. Yeah, some of the, but the accountant is there, so he can, she can explain better the, when you look at uh, what, what, what I read, 1.848 in 2020, 2021, going up to 2169, there is obviously that, that uh, difference. When you add, when you add um, for example, in 2022, when you add, 2150 oh, <coughs> to 19. You get exactly what is in my thing. Yes, yes, I agree with you, but yes, my, my point is on the 21 because we have the 1848 in the 2020 brochure. So I was expecting to see the 1848, but here was 1620466, a difference of 
Luckily, we have the 2021 20, accounts. Yes, page check. 18 on 2020. You see, this one is consistent. Can you see? This one is consistent here. But this one is not consistent. But this one. It could be typo. Accountant is looking at it, so let's continue. Any more questions? Okay. Because, let me see. I would explain to you later on. So let's go on. Any, any more questions? Because we, I remember we went through this back and forth, back and forth over how many board meetings? Over five board meetings, we look at this, go back, bring it, go back, bring it, go back. So we did a, a lot of work on it. Try to correct inconsistencies here and there, you know, but the accountant is so he's looking at it. Any more questions? Let's take the questions. But you, you, have, you don't have a problem with the latest number. That's the 2022. It's the 2021. Exactly. Okay. Any more questions? Thank you. Thank you very much. Good morning. Good morning. I have a few issues to raise. Concerning number one is uh, the revenue side, where um, page 12 revenue in 2020. Which one is this? 2122, page 12. Page 12. Yes, there is sponsorships. Maxwell Nanayao Adu Asabri. On uh, revenue, yes. revenue, we have sponsorships. In 2020, 2021, it was 1,601,465. And then 2022, it was 2,170,121. And we have listed sponsors as Sonon Asogli Power, um, Goel Company, um, SES. What I want to find out from the chairman is how many of these two million stands in the name of each sponsor? Well, if, if this detail is not in the accounts, these are things you can, you as a shareholder, you can always go to the second secretary and find out. As we find out from the secretary. Details that are not here, you can always approach the, the account department and find out. Oh, I see. You understand? I thought, I thought maybe you could brief us carefully on, on, on what each and every sponsor contributes. We can't, we don't have all the details here. For instance, Goyle is a small amount every month. Yes, you yes. Know. however small it is, uh, we want to know. Um, um, when we want uh, to know how much is the, it. The, um, the uh, I recall the, the, how do you call it, the, as only power spent about two hundred thousand dollars or thereabout, but remember that when, when you contribute, when you when you sponsor, when 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 the company is, when the company is sponsored for a year, okay, it may the, the sponsor may go over a calendar year, and get split into the financial years. You see what I'm saying? Okay. So, 
Do you have to go to the account for the details? My next question is, this common value alliance uh, between Ovinam and then Cincinnati and Accra as of Hook. Still on page, this one is on page 11, Common Value Alliance. Page 11. Paragraph 1.7, Common Value Alliance. Yep. Yes. We have this alliance, at least we have had it for some time now. And can, 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 can we get some explanation on the nature of this alliance and what it means to a class of folk, if there is any financial inflows, what it means to us of folk in the future? Thank you. Okay, um, we have had opportunity to explain the CBC allowance many, many times. When the reps of Oppenheim, Cincinnati were here, we had a, a press conference to which we invited uh, stakeholders at the, at the um, atrium of the World Trade Center. And in my recent uh, uh, talk with the stakeholders, we explained. But let me explain again. The cooperation between the three clubs covers four areas. But let me say it doesn't impose any obligation on a class of folk, financial obligation on a class of folk. Be, um, a little background. Before we finally settled on this alliance, we had, we had approached many companies, many, many football clubs. I had meetings with Liverpool in London, had meetings with uh, Arsenal in London. I mean, I didn't go to Liverpool in Liverpool, but I went to the office in London and had meetings with Arsenal at the Emirates. We had been in touch with the likes of Real Madrid, who were really striking really high, you know, and Barcelona and et cetera. But the problem we had with some of these clubs, what they wanted was not as not the kind of partners you are talking about. Mm -hmm. Arsenal, for instance, required you to pay some money. Liverpool also required payment of some money. You know. Even small clubs, you know, small, much smaller clubs also required some money. But this one is really a partnership that sees us cooperating in four different areas. One is talent development, okay? Where talent development means that we all uh, cooperate in terms of experiences in developing young talent. For example, some of the young talent in our academy would have the opportunity to go to Cincinnati to school at the same time, play football. You know, these very popular US sports scholarships. So indeed, beginning of last year, they asked us to submit three such young talents who could make it to uh, Cincinnati. They will still be like House of Oak uh, assets, or if we chose, we sign an agreement under which we, um, we, we get some money for them, for Cincinnati to also have some interest in them, just like any uh, dealing players. Under the talent development, we could send some players. We can send some players to go and train with them and come back. <laughs> Similarly, like they could send technical people to come to our academy to help, to help train or share ideas with uh, those who are developing our young talent. That is talent development. Again, as I said, some of the young players could get a chance to go to uh, Cincinnati, okay? Then under knowledge sharing, we sh we'll, we'll share knowledge across all areas of football, football, football administration management, from technique, I mean coaching, to scouting, 
to marketing and commercial activities, financial operations, just across everything, so that we could send our staff to any of the two clubs to study what they do in all of these areas. They could also send people to us to see what we do, learn from what we do, or share with us what they do. It's supposed to be a three-way thing, not house of folk always be on the receiving and no. They believe they could also have something to, 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 to learn from house of folk. Commercial operations, merchandising operations, or everything having to do with managing a crowd of folk, managing Cincinnati, Hoffenheim, would share knowledge in all of this. things. nothing um, hidden from, you know, very, very transparent uh, kind of uh, collaboration. So you can see there's an, uh, quite a difference between talent development, focusing on players, developing them from young all the way to the senior level. Indeed, I mean, uh, the, the departure of Salim Adam for her is part of this talent thing. So it is just, uh, uh, but we managed to get some money for it, you know. So um, Salim joined what they call the MLS Next Pro. Okay, and, and I've, se I've been following, I've seen that he's been playing regularly. In fact, if you look at the selection of uh, Cincinnati 2, he plays regularly, he plays 90 minutes regularly, which is very good, you know. So that's part of time development, okay, from the youngest to the most senior players. Then, as I said, knowledge sharing. That goes beyond players. Every aspect of football administration. When we find a need, we can invite them or ask to visit them. If they find something interesting, they share with us. And we do this with our regular Friday meetings. And of course, we share a common WhatsApp platform. We also communicate through the email and all of that. Okay? And as part of the time development also, you know, the idea, the idea of uh, pre-season tournaments featuring the three clubs, okay, and others that will join by invitation, it's all part of the time development. So it's time development, and there is the knowledge sharing. Now, at the third level is what we call impact. It features working together to make interventions in our communities as part of our corporate social responsibility activities. So we can identify a project here. Hoffenheim, Cincinnati would come work with us to impact the community through that project. That was why on one of their visits, the three of us who went to I mean, the three clubs represented went to uh, Agoboloshi to look at the facilities there at a time when they were moving the traders from Agoboloshi to see what possibly we could together do to impact the community. If we identify something in Pobiman or any part of Ghana that is worth, you know, looking at, Hasofo could invite the CVCA partners to come together to do some work in those areas. So again, talent development, knowledge sharing, and an impact slash corporate social responsibility. At the fourth level is joint business. Joint business. If we identify something uh, that has a business potential, the, the three clubs could come together as joint partners to prosecute that business agenda and share the, the, the benefits. It could be football related directly, where we, become, we are part of a tournament that earns money that we share, or it could be non-football related, but making some impact or making some profit. So that's the nature of the cooperation. It's extremely comp comprehensive. I can't see anything that is excluded. Time development, 
knowledge um, sharing, impact and cooperation and responsibility, and fourthly, joint business. That's it. I think that is, that is very good. And, and again, you see, we've seen other partnerships that have, have become uh, things that are left on the, on, the, on, the, on, the, on the drawing board. They are shelved. This is a very active one. We yet to see it blossom to the full, but I can tell that they are extremely interested in everything that we are doing. Hoffenheim have explained to us, you know, they are highly technical, one of the most technologically oriented clubs in Europe. That's why I realized that they have produced many of the big coaches, the likes of uh, Tuchel, has had something to do with uh, uh, Hoffenheim, Flick, Sandro, you know, Hoffenheim, Nigel Man. they all have been part of Hoffenheim. And they came to demonstrate to them of the latest technologies that they employ. You know, they are owned majority by SAP, the giant uh, German uh, uh, tech firm. You know, they have this software, uh, one of the business, leading business softwares in, in, in the world. So they are highly technical, and they are willing to share all of these things with us. So we've been talking across all of these areas, okay? So we know how they manage their clubs, the structures they have in the technical, the technical department that they've shared with us, okay? And we are exploring possibilities of, you know, getting experts from Ophina in particular to join our team. Sometimes maybe it should be short-term, long-term, and et cetera. And they've made some interesting offers in that regard that will impose financial obligations on their part. Okay, possibility of, you know, sending us technical people where they pay the bulk of the cost involved and all of that. So it's a very comprehensive thing that we are very proud of. And it's one of its kind of world where three teams are cooperating from three continents under the slogan, three continents, three clubs, one mission. That's very interesting. Thank you. And I was, thank you very much. And I was that this took, this took a long time to negotiate. Delicate negotiations took place to eventually structure this. So it imposes no obligations on us okay. as compared to the ones that, you know, we were trying to do with, uh, uh, how do you call them, uh, the, the other clubs, you know. And, and, and you know, like, well, some of them were thinking of structures like what um, Arsenal has with, uh, what is Arsenal has the Rwanda thing? Rwanda on the, yeah, you know, some of them try to make money from these relationships. Who are so contractual, they send you coach for X hours a year, you know, no, we don't have that. Ours is extremely flexible, supposed to be, uh, have a, a, with mutual respect and all of that, and Mutual benefits, yes. Chairman, uh, I think the bit about imposing no financial obligations on us is quite clear. And I was with the view that in, your, in the course of your explanation, uh, we could get something out of the partnership immediately concerning a coach, a top-notch coach, and not this one that we have. Thank you very much. <laughs> well, I, I said it briefly that they had offered, made offers under which they would bear a lot of the cost, you know, some of these details you can't present now. No. Absolutely no. Some of these details we cannot present now. But that's why I put it very roughly, that in one case, they've offered, they will send, you know, some expertise to us where they bear, they, they bear the bulk of the cost. They ask, how, how much can you guys afford? You know, we, we, we've been extremely adventurous in trying to get the best coach we can have. There was one case, there's one case of a, one of the, one of the most, one of the, the most renowned former footballers whose name would, would ring back anywhere. Who was interested in the class of folk? You know, but of course not connected with Hope and Cincinnati. And what they wanted a month was very much northwards, you know. So, yeah, so we've been working really hard on these matters, you see. But let me say this, though. 
sometimes the way we read some of these things is not very good. Even the best coaches have failed at different places. Is that not true? So it's not an exact science of one plus one equal to two. How many coaches has Chelsea had by the past since 2010? Who knows? Chelsea. Those of you are Chelsea fans. How many coaches has Chelsea had? Last season, three coaches. It doesn't mean the coaches, the, the managers of Chelsea don't know anything. It doesn't mean that. Real Madrid, how many coaches have they had by the past 10 years? About nine. You see, so sometimes the way some of you present things is not really fair. Unless you don't know what's happening in football globally. Flamengo. It's an old club. They've had 23 coaches since 2010. We hear also what we are doing. 23 coaches. Flamengo, since 2010. You can talk my United. Chelsea. You know? So that is the reality. It's not an exact science. That's why you can have a, a coach as good as Tuchel, excuse me, being sacked from uh, Chelsea, but finding home in another, another club. Exactly. So when you are a genuine supporter, you have to understand these things and keep supporting. You see what I'm saying? Arsenal, look at what they went through for many years until now. Liverpool, for 30 years in the doldrums until uh, a club came in. So it's not an exact science. Let's get that clear. It's not like one plus one equals to two. There's always a lot of judgment involved. And many factors come to play in making a coach succeed or fail. You know, one of the biggest failures was uh, this coach who was doing so well, Coach Moyes, that he was doing very well in Everton. And then Manchester took him with high hopes. He didn't last. Since then, Manchester has been going in and out, various coaches. We've seen even uh, uh, your, your popular friend, uh, Chelsea man, Mourinho. Jose Mourinho, sacked from here and sacked from there. For the first time, Germany sacked a coach. Eh? For the first time, Germany sacked a coach recently. So please, 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 what do you respect? If all do you respect? It's not an exact science. And for an ambitious club like Rass of Folk, sometimes you don't have the patience, which is why you may change very quickly the same way Chelsea has done over the years, you know? And they, they, they are still struggling to get it right. Pochettino from, uh, what do you call it, from, Chel from Tottenham to PSG, struggling with uh, Chelsea. So Chelsea don't know what they're doing. So please, what do you respect, OK? A good coach can still find a new area, a new environment difficult. It doesn't mean that the coach is totally useless. Neither does it mean that the managers don't know what they're doing. One of the biggest challenges we have across the is making sure the fans keep supporting. Because sometimes the negativity also hurts us, hurts our ability to raise sponsorship, and et cetera. So please, all due respect, let's understand that football administration, coaching, neither of, neither, none of them is an exact science. It's not one plus one equal to two. Thank you. Any more questions? Good afternoon. Okay. Okay. Let's have a response to the accounting question then, uh, please. So the first question, the first question wanted to find out why we have a difference between the 2021 um, figure and then the 2022 figures. It has to do with a change in presentation. If you look at the notes in, on page 24, it does not include audit fees and depreciation, which are now presented on the face of the account on page 19. If you put those two numbers together, they reconcile. There's no difference. Thank you. Th thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you. Well, I told you that auditors did a good job. 
you know, there were meticulous, and the all report came to the board back and forth, back for at least five <laughs> meetings, five meetings on these reports. But thank you so much to, for, for raising it. And thank you, uh, Mr. Vanderpoy. Thank you. Any more questions? Good yes, afternoon. Please go ahead, my brother. Thank you, Chairman. My name is Haruna Abuaje. From Chairman's reports, as a football fan, I know most clubs' revenue comes from player sales. But when I checked our revenue side, there is no revenue from player sales. And that's, that's have made me feel very sad. Because if you check, it's both 20, 2021 and 2022. Even our smaller clubs, most of them, their revenue comes from player sales. And I think as of work as big as we are, even if you, we, because if you check, even one player sales can cater for the gate proceed in this, in this report. So I played with management Thank to, you. to do well with our play, player sales. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. <laughs> but let me explain the issue of player sales generally. Mm? The most successful clubs don't, ne don't necessarily make money from player sales. Because as much as they sell, what do they do? What do they do? They buy the most successful clubs. So you, we need to define what our business model is. If you want to make money from selling players, then you'll be like the other clubs that just want to sell players. But you see, to be able to do both, that is why we are strength, excuse me please, that's why the academy is very important. You see what I'm saying? You can sell a lot of youthful players, so you'll be seeing a lot of change in future. But has of folk is not like a selling club. It doesn't mean that we will not sell. But when we sell, the net may be still nil because most of the money may go into purchases. There are some clubs, I mean, we all know that the likes of Wafa never aimed to win the league. This was talent sales. That's what they did. Inter-allies, it was the same. You know, our strategy is a bit different. But what we are doing now with the academy is to be able to get very precocious talent. I'm looking for the day when uh, the likes of Real Madrid will hear about an outstanding talent in a crowd of folk. Just as we've had the recent one uh, Real Madrid bought in uh, Brazil for about 60 something to 70 million, young talent. We are in the hunt for some of those talents to populate our academy so we can make a lot of money from these young player sales. But if you want to win the league, when you sell players, you must replace them. So you may not necessarily make money at the senior side on a net basis. You sell, you have to replace. That, that is the reality. You know, but we are, we are sure that we are looking at the business model thoroughly, and we will be happy, I mean, to sell young talent, 17 years, 16, 17, who may not be ripe for us proper, but has talent that attracts them to other teams and could bring us a lot of money. When we sell those, of course, we go for the more mature, maybe cheaper ones that can play in the, in the Premier League and also in the Africa competition. So we, we are extremely conscious of all of this. And we want to assure you that our desire is to make us commercially viable. That is why we are also saying that through the rights issue, we want to clean the balance of crowds of folk. But so that we don't return to a debt reading club in future, we must enhance all our revenue sources from ticketing to merchandise sales to sponsorships through partnerships, player sales, and et cetera. So uh, we, we intend to make this uh, commercially uh, viable. Okay? You know, so, but not be, don't be frightened by the fact that we are in debt now. 
We are there because we invested so much in infrastructure at a time when we, didn't, we don't have revenues. But what we are doing today in terms of infrastructure, other things we have to do in future. The strategy that has allowed us to do it, not very easy to replicate, to be very difficult for, particularly in a difficult time like we've been through. Construction didn't stop during COVID. It didn't stop during uh, the Ghana, Ghana economic crisis and debt exchange. We still were on. You know, so I think the board and management have done extremely well in this regard. Because after this program is completed, the only thing we'll be lacking will be a stadium. That's the only thing we'll be lacking. Even though, even though we don't have the money now, at least we've, we are, we've been writing letters looking for <coughs> sites for that future stadium. So I think that right, that's the folk is on a, is on a good course. The outlook is very good. It's unfortunate that performance so far in the current league has not reflected what this board has done. I mean, look at the players we have. Look at our defense, defense setup. The, 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 the central defense alone. We have like four players, any two of whom should be able to start. Look at our right full back. Look at our left full back. Okay, national class players. Look at our midfield, you know. So very soon, I'm sure we'll be able to deliver and we'll all be happy. But in any case, we are on a, the right course. We are absolutely on the right course. And those of you who have not visited Poeman, make time to be and see what we have done. I mean, can you imagine that as, until, until a few months ago, not in one year, as of folk went searching for places to train. Today, we are at Aquinas, Next time they say, well, Aquinas is not available because uh, somebody has booked it. Then we go to, uh, what, Legon. Then you go to uh, ATTC. Today we have four pitches. Which other club has that? And we build those through very difficult times. <laughs> thank, thank you, thank you. When Hoffenheim and Snati came here, they were so impressed about the quality of our AstroTurf. They were so impressed about the quality of our AstroTurf. So, we need your support. We need the positives to come out there so that our image is good and makes us attractive to sponsors. And when it comes to sponsorship, we have been very ambitious and we are still looking, you know. But what we are doing at the academy, for example, we think would help us. We want to make the academy a green academy. We will very soon uh, deploy solar panels so we can be dependent on solar. You know, you would see that we have planted a lot of trees, flowers, to be uh, such a beautiful place that we expect parents to be very happy to bring their kids there, either as part of the, the school academy or even just weekends for training. So I, I think we're on a good course. Any more questions? You know, so again, let's not be frightened by the dead because luckily we have a solution. How many of you know how much, uh, of course, these are big clubs anyway. How many of you know how much, you know, Everton, like, for example, O's? So not one of the biggest clubs. Maybe a billion, billion pounds. Chelsea, <laughs> of about 1.8 billion, you know. It's unfortunate the nature of the game, nature of football. And, and it's sad that in our case, attendance, attendance is not good. You know, uh, Chelsea is struggling, but Stamford Bridge is full when they're playing. You see, we should also learn to patronize the games and let's help to spread, you know, the love and uh, promote our support. Thank you. Yes, please. Um, good afternoon. Um, please, my name is Reginald K. Um, a bit on um, Reginald K. A bit on the Common Value Alliance. I've heard Chairman in his preamble that um, Cincinnati for Salim Adams, they made a bit of cash. But I've gone through the books and I didn't see it being captured as part of the revenues. Um, I want Chairman to throw more light on the modalities of how um, these alliance, as far as player acquisition is concerned. Because I've heard um, Abdul Salam on radio on air saying that if the player performs creditably well, 
um, the player is likely to be bought or they'll buy it outrightly and then there's, there's going to be a percentage strike and then the two clubs get their fair share. Can Chairman throw more light on that for me to my level of understanding? Thank you. Anyway, yeah, but again, back before I answer that question, on this player, player sales, again, it's not every year that you can sell players anyway, because you're not a selling club. But when you look at our accounts, you see that for June, the financial year that ended June 2021, there were sales, and they produced about 1.1 uh, 1 .1 million Ghana cities. In, in, in 2020-21, 1.1 uh, million uh, Ghana cities, okay? Now, coming to Salim Adams. You know Salim Adams' transfer was recent. That was in the beginning of the year, January, okay? So that falls in a different financial year. So if any proceeds came from uh, Salim sales, Salim, sorry, Salim, loan, okay, it went on a one-year loan. If any money came from that, it will reflect in the financial year ending June 30, 2023. Is that clear? That's one. And two, of course, yes, when he performs well, they have an option to buy him at the end of the year. You understand? That is why we take interest in monitoring and that's why I'm happy that at least he's featuring regularly. He's featuring, he scored a goal from midfield, which is good, and he's featuring regularly, you know. So we, we are hoping that they would exercise the option to buy him. From the, when, 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 but I wish, uh, you are talking about Abdul Salam, I wish you knew how much has paid Abdul Salam for Salim. I wish he had said that also. Because you are saying that he said when Salim does well, blah, blah, blah. I wish you knew how much we paid him or how much we are supposed to pay him. Pardon? No, we, but we don't want to disclose all those kind of details, you know. You see, Salim costs more than the loan fee for one year. Costs more than the loan fee, okay, for one year. But once he performs, then they'll exercise the option to buy him. They will get something that is reasonable. When it is done, those will all be uh, 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 available information. You know, with us, nothing that has happened is a secret, very transparent. When it's a strategic move that has not um, um, that has not materialized yet. Those can be confidential. For instance, when we we're bringing CVCA, nobody knew until the partners arrived here. Less people send concocted wrong information to undermine us. So sometimes we are very strategic. But what has happened in us, nothing confidential. Once it's happened, it's available for any one of you to know. You want to know how much we spend on Poppy Man? Of course, the, uh, how do you call it, the account we will tell you all the details. And I personally said they should be able to allocate the spending per, 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 per sub-project, whether it's tennis or uh, volleyball or uh, pitch one or pitch two. You know, those details will all be available, okay? Thank you. Any more questions? Otherwise, uh, we continue. Thank you very much. Oh, okay. Okay. Who is that? Polo, 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 Polo. Oh, Polo? Uh, another one. Oh, okay. All right. La last question, please. Last question. Yeah. Good afternoon. Please. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Yeah, once again, I'm Farouk Zakari. Please, I would like to know Pubiman Project. 
the name of the title of the project, the name. And then two, we also like to know the duration of the project, funding, terms of payment of the project, and the name of the land title. Yes. These are the simple things I, I, I would like to know. Thank you. Okay, a very quick one. The land is owned by, you know, um, Hearts of Oak. We have had to go and renegotiate the transaction with uh, the chiefs and elders of Obiman. Okay? And I think they, at one time there were like two separate lands brought together. Is that it? We had to bring two separate lands together in one lease agreement. That is, um, and the owner is House of Oak. The owner is Accra House of Oak. We, and we have the lease extended. Everything was renegotiated. The boundary better defined, two plots coming together as one new lease, extended lease with uh, the relevant required payments. So that's the appointment, uh, the land. Is that okay? So no. basically it's for Accra Hearts of Oak. Yes. Who else? For, I, I, I just want to know. I, I mean, why, why is that? Is that kind of, it's Accra Hearts of Oak project. Yes, because, because somebody can also be asking, does the head of people Accra Hearts of Oak? It's for Hearts of Oak. Because what? We have been hearing the team belongs to someone. Which team? Accra has to folk belong to someone. Of course, it belongs to people. Yes, so I would like to know because I'm also part of Accra has to folk. So the Accra has to folk belongs to who? The owners. <laughs> Sir, don't get me so, wrong. So it's, excuse me, maybe don't get don't, me wrong. In, in da, indirectly. Don't get in, me wrong. In, indirectly. In da, indirectly. Oh, please. Hello, hello, hello. Ah, we are having this. They don't know what they are about. <laughs> All right, you quickly, quickly. quickly. This is really unreal. Just a small question. Yes, yes, yes. your accounts um 2022 accounts farouk yeah, did, you, did you read this i have it yes did there. you read this yes you don't understand i don't i don't that don't, is why i'm asking the question you don't understand this yes so you why explain to me come and read it for us to hear 
Yeah, yeah. Aji. So, so if I'm a shareholder, I'm also not a shareholder. A shareholder. That's why you're here. I said, I said, a, a one of a member of yours said the thing belongs to a particular person, and I would like to know because I'm also a shareholder. Okay, sit down. If, 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 you, if quiet, quiet, sit down. Let's explain. To you. Sit down. Let me explain to you. Sit down. Ah. Okay, sit down. Let me explain to you. Sit down. Ah. You see, when when Do they just... when they refer to. Let's say when they refer to, when they refer to, when they refer to, when they refer to, let's say, when they refer to Abramovich, let's say, when they say, when, when they refer, I mean, this is all part kind of pettiness. When they refer, for example, when they refer to a, a, a Abramovich as owner of Chelsea, it doesn't necessarily mean that he owns the 100%. It doesn't work like that. If you don't understand, let's educate you. When they say uh, owner of uh, uh, whatever house of work is SAS, it's all because SAS majority. That's all it means. Okay? So it doesn't mean that if they say the Glazers own Man U, they don't own 100%. You see, if you don't understand, let's educate you. It doesn't own 100%. But they can call him owners, the owners, the owners. Because the owners, they do the funding, they take the decisions. Now, let me answer the question about funding of uh, Pobiman. Pobiman, Pobiman is being, fa Pobiman is funded by debt from the bank. But the debt is fully guaranteed by SAS. Now, the project has delayed. The bank debt has matured. SAS has, has paid it. That we couldn't call you to come and pay. We couldn't call you to come and pay. So SS is paying on behalf of all of you. It deserves that respect. It doesn't mean that only SAS owns it. SAS paid for the head office, uh, uh, the commercial center. We could have come to each of you to bring money. Thank you very much. We didn't come to you to bring money to pay for commercial center. SAS issued a check. Similarly, SAS. The, 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 uh, uh, the bank financing covered Pobiman. SA had to, had to issue the check for, uh, how do you call it, head office. You understand? So, so in principle, Pobiman is funded by debt. That's why when you look at uh, the accounts, let me show you just so that we all understand. When you look at <laughs> When you look at um, page 30, page 30, you see bank loan. You see bank loan, page 30, opening balance, bank loan. That's the third column, opening balance, bank loan. Opening balance, 6.2 million. Additions, 11.8 million. Interest, 1.8 million. And you see what? Loan repayment, who paid? Not you didn't pay. You didn't pay. The money came from somewhere. Because SAS guaranteed the loan. The project delayed because of COVID and all of that. Loan repayment became due, and SAS paid. So that's why you see that the net loan as that the end of this financial year that we are referring to is only 5.5 million. Okay? And this one also has been repaid in the course of the previous financial year. So if you see the accounts for the last year, I mean the last year ending, which are being audited now, you will see changes. Okay? When Man United needs money, they expect the majority owners to bring the money. When Chelsea needed money, they expect Abramovich to bring the money. They don't go to everybody, every shareholder. Okay, the same thing with Everton. When they need money, they go, they follow on their, you know. That's how co companies work. Now come to Ghana. When you, see, when you hear about uh, 
uh, uh, Unilever. Who owns Unilever? It's Unilever. But I'm also a shoulder of Unilever. I can't go and fight them that you don't own Unilever. I'm a shareholder of Unilever. I'm a shareholder of MTN. But who owns MTN? It's MTN. Do you understand? I'm a, I'm a big shareholder of MTN, Ghana. But my big shareholding is still a, a small, very small minority. At least a million plus something shares, I can't remember even. I'm a shareholder of MTN. But who is the owner of MTN? It's MTN. So if you don't understand, please learn and stop being petty about these matters. You see what I'm saying? We are just sacrificing, spending so much money. We deserve praise and appreciation. Thank you. We deserve praise and not, 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 not unnecessary pettiness and jealousy. So when they say Togwe owns it, or you know, it's just because Togwe is funding it, or Togwe's companies are funding it. That is why we don't owe salaries. You see what I'm saying? And we should be happy about that. Okay, let me, let, let me explain. You remember, I, I, even, I even said that, I, I said that, <laughs> it doesn't work like that. Okay, let, let's go on, let's go on, please, let's go on, let's go on. I don't say anything. The majority understand. The majority understand, so it's okay. No, but, what, but, but you say you don't understand, so we teach you to understand. That's what we say. Okay, madam, yes. Hello, Phobia. Okay, let's listen to the lady. The, Phobia. The let's listen hey, to the I first know, lady. I don't know what saying. Okay, Phobia. <laughs> okay, so um, I think that after listening to the auditor presenting the accounts, I would have appreciated it more if I had access to the previous year's accounts, which is available anyway. Later, I'll get it. But looking at it here, because I don't have the previous ones, I don't know how he derived um, getting the opening balances of the accounts. More so, after presenting the account, you realize that our books is not in good form. I mean, like the club is not doing well, let me put it that way. I want to find out from the board, are there plans as far as the negative balances is concerned. Are there plans to clearing the, the negative balances of the books to make a class of folk Madam, prudent for um, sponsors to come on board? Madam, we, we've met, we said that already. We have talked about that already. Oh, okay. We said by the, by the time the rest issue is done, a class will be the three. It's been said many times. Oh, okay. And you see, let me, let me, let me tell you, excuse me. Please, uh, if I didn't listen and I ask, I have every right to ask. So please keep oh, quiet. Let him explain. I, I, I so go, I go, stop I go. complaining as if it's something. I go, I go, please, please. So as okay, please. We have said it already that that is a strategy. Please, I, I, can we have some silence for chairman to speak? It's okay, it's okay, it's okay. We talk about a two-pronged strategy. The first one is to clean the books across the folk. Yes. We are not going to call on you to necessarily bring the money. We we'll do the rights issue. Okay, of course, when, let, me, let me explain more simply. When we do the rice issue, for example, and we are raising $100 million, let's say 100 million cities, 100 million cities, rice issue. Yeah. If you own 1%, in principle, you are entitled to contribute um, 1 million. You see what I'm saying? If we are raising 100 million, 100 million, 1% 100 million is what? 1 million. So if you own 1% of Azo Folk, you are entitled to buy 1 million worth of shares. You understand? Yes, please. Okay. So if SAS owns, let's like, say, 70%, is entitled to, entitled to buy 70 million, meaning invest 70 million. We don't have to. In fact, if people will invest, I will invest, please. There's nothing I gain from owning a class of folk, apart from headaches. So when we do a rice issue, when, when we do a rice issue to raise 100 million, please go bring your friends to come and buy the 100 million. I will not buy. But if you don't buy, because I have so folk to survive, because my good name, not because I love her, so because my good name, I will convert all of my debt 
into equity. That's the strategy. Please. I mean, we, know, we, understand, we understand these things very well. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. We will, I will convert all my debt into equity. And that will mean all this debt is wiped out. That's the strategy. Okay. Okay? And I've said it before in my speech and all of that. And that is one. The second strategy, the second strategy is to make sure that is, is to make sure going forward, we commercialize Pobiman to understand that it generates cash. We want them to be Pobiman into a cash cow so that it makes money for us or folk on a regular basis to run, you know, head office, for instance. We need only the top floor, only the top floor for corporate office to enhance image of Accra so folk. The ground floor and the other floors, okay, four floors actually. The first two floors, rented. Third floor will be like board room and trophy gallery. The top, top floor, that's where the top facilities will be, okay? So the ground floor, first floor, will make revenue for us regularly. Commercial, commercial, uh, public man will make money for us regularly. Then, of course, we'll work hard on the sponsorships, as I said, naming rights, and et cetera so that has does not return into debt again. But the good news is that going forward, has doesn't have to build any of this again. The only serious investment that we have to do is the stadium, you see. So, so the two-prong strategy, one, the first one will clean the books. Has of all have so much, but little or no debt. Second strategy is to now make money to make us of all sustainable. Now, there is a second phase to the Pullman project that I've talked about. Some of you will remember. We have left a piece of land to develop an 80-room hotel of Pullman land. The idea is that, for example, if, this is, if, if you were ready now, when Ghana is hosting Africa, all Africa games next year, a lot of things will come. They need place to train. And there will not be a better place than Asobo Academy. Because at Has Academy, there will be a hotel where the players can stay, wake up and jump on the pitch. They won't stay at maybe a Akrasi hotel, wake up and be looking for Aquinas or somewhere else, you know? So we want to make the academy attractive to teams, okay, that will come and come pre-season, or in fact, Ivory Coast. Ivory Coast is also hosting a Chan. Compa clubs would like to come to a country like Ghana, pre pre prepare and acclimatize. If you have four pitches and you have a hotel they can stay on, they can stay in. Where else would they not? Where, where else would they go? House of folk. So the the only thing left, Apoi man, will be two things. One is the hotel, and two, the stands for the mini stadium. When you enter Apoi man, the pitch, the only pitch on your left, is the mini stadium. That's why we've we've allowed many a lot of space around the pitch. We will build stands around that. So there are two things we need to do beyond what we've done now, Pobi Man, or what we are completing. The hotel, 80 room. 80 room because a team will need like 20 rooms. 20 players pairing in 10 rooms. 10 officials, 10 rooms. So it means then the, the, the acad academy can host four teams at the same time. In fact, some professionals, some of our, some of our former professional who played in Europe, and other coaches from abroad who visited, they said, wow, this place will be suitable even for European teams for precision training. When they want to come and train under, under the hot climate and build their energy for the next season. So that is the strategy at uh, Pobiman. Yes. You understand? So these are the only tools you need to build. The, the new head of the, the stadium, sorry, the hotel and the stands. Okay? okay. I appreciate it. So Thank that's you. it. <laughs> Zainab so, Salifu Abdelai. So I guess we all now understand 
in broad, in broad terms, who owns House of Oak? We all own House of Oak. We are majority shareholders. We understand how Podman is funded, okay? We understand how we're going to clean the balance of House of Oak so that the club looks clean and can meet the strictest fair play, financial fair play conditions or requirements, okay? Thank you. Yes, last, la, la, I was, oh, sorry. Yeah, please. Okay, so thank you very much. Uh, my name is Colin Squesientry, RCC Chairman for Northern Region. Um, first of all, um, I would like to congratulate the board for the presentation um, this afternoon and then how far we have gone as a club. I think that uh, for me, my mindset uh, of the institution Accra has to folk, uh, quickly changed immediately after the stakeholder meeting at the World Trade Center. Today I'm here as a shareholder and then I think um, I'll move to page 12. Uh, that is the revenue aspect. I think that the success of every institution is based on how best you are able to raise revenue. And for that matter, I see two items here. That is uh, March proceeds and then sales of uh, replica JCs. And I want to emphasize on the figures shown uh, under um, 2022. It's more of a suggestion. I think that um, the figures there could even go higher than what is expected several times if we are able to do uh, some things very well. And uh, one of the things that I would like to practically we are buying the JCs this year at 220 cities. Perfect. I have sought, uh, I've, I, I had to sort for explanation as to why and I was explained to, and I think it's okay with me. But the problem that I have with it that we need to look at is clearly, I'm based in Tamale. I arranged with somebody in Accra at the Secretariat, and I sent 220 cities to the person for the JC. Um, from the secretariat through a deliverer to the bar station will cost me an additional cost of maybe 20 cities. From the station circle to Tamale could cost me 50 cities. When you sum it up, we are paying almost 300 cities. This extra cost could have gone to the club if we arrange. Perfectly, Tobi mentioned that we have some collaboration with GWEL. Nationwide, GWEL has all their stations across. Why are we not taking that opportunity to ensure that that collaboration, we extend it further? GWEL could be supplied with our JCs and some souvenirs that we could make money out of. We travel to um, Sunyani, you see people who have used our colors, they have displayed them, they are making money out of our brands. Why are we not extending, producing replicas, souvenirs, and positioning them strategically, nationwide, and then buying them at a cost of just the 220? The number of people who would purchase it, if I take off the 70 extra, I could add something to it to purchase it for somebody who is not better placed to buy it. At the end of the day, we would have sold more and we would have made more profit. Yeah. Thank you very much. Thank you. No, I mean, all those have been explored. Even we had thought about uh, using uh, even a star, star insurance, which, which is also one of our sponsors. You know, so all these have actually been explored, but it's a, that's a good point. You know. All, all that is being explored. We want to sell as much as, as possible. We want to send the JCs as close to the people as possible. Okay? Um, we had even thought at one time about Melcom and all of that. So, so all of those are being considered. But indeed, not only, not only uh, Goyle, but Shell for their uh, filling stations as well. You know, so we had we are thought about all of those things. 
Thank you very much. Yes. Good afternoon, Chairman. My name is Stephen, Stephen MP. I, 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 I want to know why these days our players, why they want to leave the club. We, we, we don't get any, any share from them because they, they, they like to go free agents. I don't know why it, it is so. Yeah. Uh -huh. Okay. Uh, well, I mean, uh, we 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 want as much as you do to get money from players um, leaving our club, and we succeeded in a few. I mean, we got some money when uh, how do you call him? When uh, the last person uh, Bania left, you see, but it was a talk of war. Barnier intentionally did not want to extend so he could go for free. But thanks to the hard work of the board, I mean, led by Honorable and, you know, we had to fight hard to be able to compel him to extend so we could, you know, make some out of him. We have, we, 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 we have been very conscious of all of these things. That is why under a lot of the current agreements we are signing, we have an option to extend. Do you understand? So if we sign you for four years, we have an option to extend for one year, by one year. So it's a problem not only in a class of folk. Other teams suffer the same problem. Most of the big clubs suffer the same problem. Kotoko suffer the same problems. Has the same problems. You see, I mean, some of the players, I'm sorry, they are like mercenaries. They worry about themselves. There are some players who come to us and say they'll sign only two years. Say two years, we don't, we are not sure you can go. And then we compel them to sign maybe three. And we have an option for us of folk to extend, you see. So that has been a challenge. I mean, the worst time we had was when, uh, was it 2017? Or oh, Abe, uh, Kizito, and all those guys left. Of course, that one was partly influenced by the coach at the time, which was why we sacked him. You see, but we would put in place measures like these days, we insist on longer term contracts, but you see, even that is also risky. But we try to give ourselves the option to extend, you see. But you see, you saw, look at what happened with, uh, what was this guy who went to Egypt? Uh, the old guy, the, the middle brother. Afutu, for example. We tried, but we, under the influence of his manager, they thought they could go free. You see, that, that was the problem. So it wasn't like we didn't want the money, we wanted it. But we are actually strategizing. There are a lot of what I call predatory managers in a system. You see what I'm saying? And there are, they, they, they just are waiting in ambush. When they see a player doing very well, they could go and uh, talk about, uh, speculate that, oh, this team wants you in Albania. And then they influence the players not to extend. These are some of the, you know, they are like predators. They wait in ambush. When they say a player is doing very well, then they, they, they pounce. But we are also trying to be much wiser. Anyway, thank you so much. Is there another question? Yes. Last question. Please, this should be the last two questions, please. And I will not leave here. Last two questions, okay? Please. Eh? So. But, but if, if, you see, if it's not related to the accounts, we can finish the accounts and get to that segment. Uh, mine is related to the accounts. Okay, all right. Please, let's, let's be patient and listen to him. Okay, um, again, my name is Reginald K. Um, uh, let me commend you on your strategic ways of trying to um, convert the books so that House of Folk is not liquidated, in other ways, being dissolved and all that. Um, again, on um, page 12, I have seen Hassa Folk, the JCs, being I mean, displayed with um, some companies, let me see, SOS or Asokli Power and all that. I didn't see the account capturing the mileage that um, Hassa Folk intends giving to those companies. I didn't see that one in the books. And again, um, 
I've seen um, the controversies, um, the debates or the arguments right away. It's not good or not pleasant for the cameras. A big club or a brand like Hasafuk. Can we be guaranteed of having this annually to prevent this in the subsequent years or the future? Thank you. Sorry, having what annually? The AGM. Oh, no, we, 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 we cannot guarantee this crisis. You see what I'm saying? I we see. want to have it every year. So that's why I said for the previous year, the COVID and the truncation of the game and all of those things. So our desire to have it every year. So but I can't, I can't use the word guarantee. Okay. Because there's a COVID, I can't, you see what I'm saying? Okay. But we'll try to have it every year. That's what we also want to do. You, you can't imagine how relieved we are today that we're having this meeting. Which is why I'm saying that we, we, are, we have made sure the accounts are being audited now. That of financial year ending June 30, 2023. So that we can have another AGM very early next year. We want to be very current. I will feel very proud. All of us will feel very proud to be able to report to our shareholders very early at the end of every year. So that one we assure you. All right. We guarantee our desire, our willingness to do it. But we can't guarantee if there's a pandemic. All right, all right. <laughs> Thank you very it. much. Thank, Thank you. you, too. Thank you. Was there that question? Or that question? That's it. Um, I asked a question earlier Which about one? the mileage. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, well, yeah. Um, what we offer the clubs? Yeah. Because of the... What, what we offer the sponsors? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, 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 yeah. We, we've always been conscious of it. You know, all the uh, exposure we give the clubs, okay, the, on, on the chest pitch panels, and all of that. But you see, Asoglipa, for example, doesn't really need Asofok. Because Asoglipa sells to only one company. You know that. Asoglipa sells to ECG. They don't need the promotion. But they came in just because we are connected. You see what I'm saying? So uh, but if for every company, we try to show them what we are offering them. You understand? We try to sell it to them. For example, we are saying that if Hass is playing and your name is on Hass yet, it means 90 minutes of free publicity of your name. We try to ask them to compare that what it will cost them to go and advertise for even one minute. So we, we are trying to do that. We're trying to let them see some benefits in that. For Pokemon, for example, because we are making it, we're trying to make it a green academy that will depend on solar where we we'll practice the best in terms of uh, environmental, water management, and all of those things, practices. We want to push us as, as a green academy, a climate conscious enterprise, so we can, through that, sell the naming rights, you know, to a company that is also interested in promoting the fight against climate change and all of those things. So we are, we, are, we are looking at how it benefits the sponsors so that we can retain the sponsorship going forward. Thank right. you. Thank you. Too. You have a suggestion? Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. My name is Ismaila Huruyani. Thank you. Uh, I think looking at what is at place, we should not expect any profit from now. I think the management and the board are building the future for the club. Looking at what they put in place, is, it, initially, I was one of those who were against this project. But now, well, I'm in support. Almost about four years ago, I started following it. What they put in place is when, if you go to Europe, that's exactly what AC Milan, Arsenal, Chelsea, all of them have, have put in place. And now the club is growing. So why don't we support the cause of the board, the cause of the management, and move the club forward? Now, look, they are, look we, we will never achieve until we build the future. We will never achieve until and that's exactly what they are doing. So let us support them. Let's forget about the past and let's come together and build the future of the club. Thank Somebody you. saying about buying a uh, purchase a player will make you profit. No, unless you buy the best player in Africa. That's where you are going to do the typical jersey in his name. That's where the supporters will buy the jersey. That's where the, the club is going to make the profits. Thank so you. please let's support them. Thank well, I'm in support of what Togbe has put in place because I've been traveling outside Europe. I've been to Emery Stadium before and I saw the infrastructure there. The time when they were building the stadium, Arsenal fans are not benefiting. 
All now I want the man, what I want the management to do is they should give us a time limit with the supporters. From now to this year, things will be, will be in places. The club will started winning. But we are not going to win the league from now to this end. We are building the club. Let's fight and build the club together with them. What Togba is putting in place is exactly what the other world too are putting in place. Is. Go to the Arab country, you see them. They have the infrastructure at the place. So he's doing the work. Please, let's come and support him. Salaamu Alaikum. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you for that. That's a good note on which to end this one. But let me assure you that while we are doing all these investments, we still have an eye on the trophies. We, and, 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 and let me add that. Uh, okay, I'll, I'll, get, I'll get to you. I'll get to you. Let me also add the following. Just imagine the past without Bobby Man. The bus sets off five hours ahead. That five hours, I'm told. Five hours, I'm told. Five hours ahead of when the training will start. They'll pick the first person. Go around Accra, picking people. By the time they arrive at the training pitch, the first person they picked has been in the car for five hours. They would have spent so much on petrol. When they close at five o'clock, the same way, they will start dropping and dropping. The last person probably will see in the car for five hours. Today, the bus doesn't have to go and pick them. So we don't spend money on petrol. We don't get the players tired. They wake up and they walk seconds onto the pitch. That is the more reason why we expected so much more from them than we are seeing today. You see, they don't have to sit in a bus for hours. And that is why also, the coach is able to train two times a day. When there are no matches ahead, the coach is able to train two times a day because they are all there. This is the way to go. So I agree with what uh, Ms. Ora is saying, that you see, we are laying the foundation, he understands it, the foundation for the future. What we are doing, others will have to do later on. You see what I'm saying? If you recall when Arsenal was spending money building Emirates Emirate Stadium, they couldn't afford to buy players. But they knew that what they were doing, others will have to do later on. You know? So the foundation is being laid. Those who went to Morocco, was it? Or Morocco, Morocco when, when, when we played there, Wack. saw kids being brought by their parents to train at work facilities, which we don't have. When you watch a match being played at Arsenal Stadium, Emirates, or Man United, or City, don't you feel embarrassed when you compare that to what we see when we are playing at uh, maybe, uh, I don't want to call it any, any pitch. You, you see what I'm saying? So, I mean, we claim that we are football crazy people. Well, we are not investing in the game. How can we compete with those who are investing in the game? So you got to appreciate what this board is doing. The, this board is ahead of its time. You see, and I tell you, people who have visited that place from even the advanced countries are very impressed about what we are doing. So let's support the board as uh, our friend just told us. You know, but I want to assure you that while we do all of these things, our number one priority is still the trophy. And we are still confident that this year we'll get it. You know. Thank you very much. So we can continue and uh, wrap up very quickly. Okay. Once again, let me thank all of you for your contributions to the discussions. I mean, all of these things uh, also give us some lessons and uh, point us in the, in the right direction. And that is what all of this is, is about. So, in the absence of uh, any further questions, will a member please raise his or her hand and move that the reports of the directors and auditors, together with the audited financial statements as of June 30, 2022, are submitted to this meeting, be and are hereby received and adopted. Yes, sir.
Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Mr. Uriah Ali. Thank you very much. Will another member please rise? Yeah. Sengene by William Dogbe. Thank you very much, William Dogbe. I now put the motion to the meeting. Will all those in favor of this motion please signify by voting, you know, uh, by raising your hands. Or by pull on the screen. You know. Okay, those against? We have to count them. Why? Why do we have to count them? I mean, uh, there's no, it's, it's by unanimous uh, vote. That's what I would have thought. There's nobody against, so why do you have to count? Okay, thank you very much, uh, colleague shareholders. So we declare the motion has been duly carried. Now we come to a very interesting part, again, where we would want all your cooperation to support the board to do the job you're doing for you. First, let me acknowledge that, you know, this board has stayed for too long. And let me admit that if we had been having board meetings in the recent years that we missed board meetings, the board's composition and structure would have changed. But unfortunately, because we've not had meetings, you know, we've not been able to uh, 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 change the board, the board structure. I, uh, ordinarily, as a person on the board members should be retiring and be offering themselves, if they want, for re-election. As I had assured you, we want to have another board meeting early next year, and we have in our mind February. Uh, the, financial, uh, the financial head is here. I'm sure the accounts will be audited before, fin but before the end of the year. We expect to finish auditing the accounts for 2022-23 before the end of the year. And if we do, we'll have another AGM in February. We want to be as current as possible. We can feel proud that our company is, 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 is being managed very well. Of course, we hope that by then, we would have also closed the rice issue, okay, and come here and, and, and celebrate, you know, a debt-free or a near debt-free across of hope, okay? The special request I want to make of members is that we approve the continuation of the board members up to the next board meeting, up to the next AGM. You give us your mandate just for the next few months until the next AGM, so we can do the proper thing and restructure the entire board. Because we have not um, obtained from members those we have, not, we have not been able to work on the members who have to retire and therefore ask them to, you know, um, represent themselves for election. So what I'm trying to say, therefore, is that we all are offering ourselves for re-election. And I want you to give us that mandate just for the rest of the time until the next <coughs> board meeting when we will now see a complete restructuring of the board. What did I say? Well, okay, yeah, thank you, thank you. Next, next AGM, when we will, uh, we will restructure the entire board, you know. I mean, this board is done quite a bit up to now. We want to see to the completion of Pobiman. And the, 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 the uh, apart from a few of the contractors who have disappointed us. The whole idea this time is that we can celebrate Bobby Mann and the head office come 11th November. 
Yes, when you go there, inside the, 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 the security gates are almost completed, the security buildings, the cripples are almost completed for the two main gates. The two smaller gates, they don't have security posts, only the small gates. But the main two gates, the two main gates, the old one that we were using when we were building the, res the residence and, and, the, and the offices, the, the security post is virtually done, and the same with the main gate when you're coming from the main road. The gates themselves, the metal gates, are all already done. Now they're going to put them on the rollers so they can roll, you know. We want to get all of these things done ideally so we can celebrate the two projects, Pobiman and head office come 11th November. So I would ask that we just honor this board with the opportunity to celebrate this project and then the term of the board, you know, comes to close next AGM. So next AGM, the board members will be voting for new board members that will be proposing. So if this makes sense, what I want is that someone who supports this idea wants to, you know, uh, propose acceptance of this resolution, this resolution will rise and, uh, and propose and then we vote and, you know, Mr. Board Chairman, yes, sir. Um, we've heard you. Ideally, some of us would have supported you on this course, especially when it's been suggested that uh, the next AGM will be held pretty soon, somewhere in February next year. I would have supported it, but I decline to support it, and these are my reasons. We didn't have AGM in 2018, uh, 2019, 2020, because obviously you have stated that it was due to uh, announced expose and COVID. 2020, we didn't have AGM. 2021, we've just been presented with a statement to go through it. And then 2022, we are having this. This board has been in place for how long, God, for how long we don't know. And on the evidence of the performance of this board, apart from proving my projects and the secretariat, if you look into the books, it is nothing to write home about. If you go on the field, it is also nothing to write home about. And I cry as a folk that was a champion, a league-winning team. On two occasions, we have been threatened with rele relegation, with this particular board in place. Mr. Board Chairman, with the greatest of respect to all of you, I think on the evidence of what the supporters have gone through in the last 12 years or so, some of us cannot guarantee an overstay of this board. I therefore <coughs> raise a counter proposal by stating that this board stands down immediately. For us, for you, as the majority shareholder to reconstitute the board, even if it is in an acting capacity, for us to go back and come in, in, in February to approve of them some of us will like it. But for some of us to be part of the process to retain this board beyond today, some of us will not be part of it. Okay, thank and you I very decline much. to, be, to, to be part of it. Thank you very thank much. You. Let me tell you why what you are saying, same thing I'm saying. What I'm saying is that you give us a mandate so that we'll consider the board, we'll reconsider the board for you to reconsider at the next at the next you know, this meeting. I mean, certainly I cannot be like a, a one-man 
compare one man person after today. What we are saying is that give us a mandate so the board can continue to function and a new set of board members will be presented at the next meeting. It's like what you're saying. Okay, if that is the case, let us put it on record that at the next AGM, which is in February, a new set of board members will be presented to us for adoption. But that's what I said. That, anyway. that is that no, so, because because I said a new set will be presented to you. I, I, I at feel, the next, yeah. I feel, I feel and sense the anger of the supporters against some members of the board, not you per se, but, but, but for your good self and your respect self. I will grant it. I will, I, I will permit myself, not to them. I will permit myself to grant it, provided that February is not going to be another three-year uh, absence, okay. right. absence of, of... Okay, of, thank of, you very much. Of, yes. Thank you. So, so would a so, member... So uh, I agree. But February, we expect a new set of so, directors. Okay, so can you move the motion for... Uh, <laughs> I have stated... Can you move? As much as. Can you? No, no. Can you? As much as. No. Let's listen. Let me. Let me. Please. You cannot use your own words. Please, for heaven's sake. Please. So, can you move a motion for allowing the board to continue pending the presentation to the AGM of a set of board members for voting? by the shareholders. Mr. Board Chairman, with the greatest of respect, I decline to move. Thank you very much. Okay. Can somebody move the motion, please? Thank you. My name is Mohammed al Hassan Musa, PO Boss 101, Akimoda. <laughs> In fact, uh, what uh, uh, Asabe started, it was good. But so far as the Board Chairman is saying that, he's an honorable man. I don't think that uh, February, the uh, deadline has given, it will go, it will elapse. Because if it does that, the PO boss will not be happy. <laughs> there will be disaster. So, in fact, we are not happy with some of the board members. Whether they like it or not, me, 101, I will say it. We are not happy with some of the board members. And that the voice, the, the voice of the people is the voice of God. And a Nigerian, Nigerian man will say that the stubborn fly will always follow the corpse to the grave. Mr. Board Chairman, I knew you before even most of your people. When you were about to enter house, I knew you. You were a serious Arsenal man. I knew you. <laughs> when it comes to infrastructure, I cannot stay here and say you haven't done what you have done well. But house of folk, we want trophies. And if this board has stayed there for 12 years and we haven't got God. I have for the, the uh, drop in the ocean, uh, leg and knockout. I don't want to go there. <laughs> we want you to make sure that at the end of February, we bring new set of board members so that we vote. With this, I'm going to shock everybody. I pray that what the board chairman has said, we should all support him that at least from now to uh, February is not long so that I support that motion that they must be maintained till February. But in February, we don't want to see any crocodile. Okay, thank, you. Thank, thank you. Thank, thank you very, very much. much. Have you moved the motion? Yes, I'll put the motion. My name is Mohammed Alas. I'm shareholder. Okay. So he has moved the, the motion to the effect that the board stem the board stem be extended until the next AGM. Thank you very much. So um, I am here to please please let's listen. Please I beg you, let's listen. Um, in seconding the motion. My name is my name is Kwesi Entry Collins. Kwesi Entry Collins. Collins, yes. Thank you, um, Thank you very much. Thank in you very seconding much. the motion, I would urge um, Chairman to try and um, redefine every board member's role mm -hmm. in the team so that it will be very clear for we, the supporters, 
if um, somebody is in charge of infrastructure, let's know. If somebody is in charge of managing the team, thank you very much. Yes, thank let's you. know. So thank that you. Will be clear. We, we are working on all of yeah, those. Thank things. you very much. Yeah, thank you very much. Thank you. Now, may I put the motion to the meeting? Will all those in favor of the motion please signify by voting, by, by raising your hands? All those in favor? Thank you. All against? All against? Thank you very much. Motion unanimously carried. Thank you very much. The second item on the agenda is to approve the remuneration of board members. Let me say that the board, there is officially a board remuneration of only a city allowance of only 100 cities, which, which is hardly paid. There is also 150 cities monthly that is hardly paid. But we must, of necessity, remunerate board members. You, you see, you can't have board members who officially are free. It, it doesn't make business sense. In fact, our partners will not respect us if we don't have anything like uh, paid board members. So, so uh, as a token, until again next meeting, until next meeting, until again next meeting, I want us to, yes, I want us to maintain the director's fees as originally prescribed, where city allowance is 100 cities. City allowance of, I mean, see you are laughing. <laughs> the directors virtual are working for free anyway, for free. For free, for free. So let's, let's hear for the directors. Let's clap for the writers. Thank you, thank you, thank you very much. Thank you. Yes. So let's, let's, I want, I want to uh, propose, you know, a motion. Okay, I want to, I want to propose this, this resolution, this resolution that the board remuneration as originally defined stays unchanged. That's the resolution I'm proposing, okay? So if somebody is in favor of that motion, the person should rise and move the motion that the board remuneration stays unchanged. Will the member do us a favor, the honor, yes? So that the board city allowance is only 100 cities per, per meeting, and the monthly allowance only 150 cities uh, per month. Thank you. A political party, a political party is voluntary. So when you go for a political position, you know you are going to voluntary to work for free. But running a football club is a money-making business. You don't employ people not to be paying them. You don't. Never. That won't happen. So to me, the board taking sitting allowance of Andre Ghana City is totally uncalled for. To me, they should be taking at least like 500 Ghana cities. That's what I'm commanding. That's true. Because, yes, so that, so that when, so that if they mess up, we can Attack them and tell them the truth because you are paying them. But without them paying them, without you paying them, attacking them, it's unnecessary. So to me, I recommended 500 Ghana CD for sitting allowance, 1,000 Ghana for maintaining pay. That's what I call. Mr. Chairman. I go, I go. Let's listen to the next shareholder. Um, Let's hold on, hold on, please. I'm Bedu, a shareholder. Thank you. In actual fact, to say that uh, 
the board should take an allowance of 100 CDs a month. Uh, I don't think it's a, because th this work is a sacrificial job. But uh, to leave your, your house, even transport alone, the cost of the petrol and other things, and then uh, your time, most of them probably they are doing something somewhere. But to leave their pressure things and they come and stay and spend uh, uh, for allowance of hundred cities, I feel is not good. And uh, on humanitarian grounds, I will plead that uh, it should be increased. As uh, the chairman already said that uh, the present board is going to stay till February, not for them to undermine the crowd, the duties of what they are going to do, I would feel that uh, for us to appreciate and they give them something higher than the 100 cities. So in fairness of this, uh, I will humbly support the last speaker. That, uh, Thank you. From now to February, not for them to undermine the crowd, they should do and then uh, they should say and then get that token 500 as they are in nomination. Thank you very much. Well, this, this makes sense for a club that is paying players an average about 5,000 cities a month, you know, we should be able to at least reward our board members, you know. So thank you very much. So maybe the counter resolution will require that board members are paid 1,000 cities a month and 500 cities city allowance. That is what Mr. Oroya, uh, Oro, Oroya. No, let's, let's, you see, let, let, please, please, you know, I, I, I what, oh, hello, hello, please, please, see. You know, this kind of money, this, excuse me, this money, I go, I go, please, I go, please, please, please. I mean, please, let's respect House of Oak. This kind of money is, Sometimes it sounds insulting. It's difficult for me to propose it anyway. See, I serve on uh, committees. I don't take any money. Autonomous league, whatever, I don't take anything. You understand? It's all sacrificial. You understand? You know, I'm chairman of a chamber of power generators. Power, this big. I take nothing. You see what I'm saying? So, yes, we're willing to sacrifice, but sometimes it's just good to show some respect, both to class of folk and, you know, to your board members. So I would think that what Mr. Oroya suggested is really small, you see, you know, it's really small. I mean, uh, very, very small, really, you know. So just so that it's in the books that the House of Folk appreciates that, you see what I'm saying, you know. Assuming, assuming, for example, assuming I can afford it, assuming, and I give it to them, it's not has folk doing it. It's not the same thing. You see what I'm saying? And it's not that they also need it for their survival. You see what I'm saying? Already they spend more than that on a class of folk. Like the gentleman said, traveling from their homes, you know, to their meetings and all of that. You know, so please, before you respect, if we can do what this gentleman, Mr. Royal said, that would make sense. Thousand cities a month. And again, that provides the basis for the incoming board as well. Thousand per month, 500 city allowance, it's okay. If that makes sense, can member, member rise and, and, uh, and, and move that motion? Please, you have a question. Very quickly, please. Let's, let's do it quick. So we, we've stayed for too long in this meeting. Hello, Mr. Board Chairman. Hello, Mr. Board Chairman. Please, my name is Shamu. Shamu. Yes, please. Uh, since the board have uh, overstayed for long, they've enjoyed, they've watched matches which the clouds pays on their behalf. And between now and uh, February, thousand cities or 
500 will not do them anything. Because I know some board members here, they don't take anything. They work for House of Food for free because they enjoy the work. I also enjoy my work as a regional chairman. Even living here right now, when I go outside, I have to give some supporters money. Please, let's maintain the, the old, old money so that when the new board comes, we can decide for them. Thank you. Well, I would say that the new board also works for free. The new board also works for free. Yes, the people who want to be on board of Council of Oak, they also work for free. I would go for that one. Hello. If this, yeah, they must also come and work for free. I mean, this is, this is very simple. We are being very petty. The new board members should also come and willing to work for free. That's what I would suggest. And those who are willing, who are quality people, must come and work for free. I would, I, I would insist on that, I'm sorry to say. Hello, Mr. Chair. If, if what, whatever we maintain here mm. will rule for the rest of, you know, for, for as long as possible. I mean, let's just be very, very, I mean, we all, we all do free service everywhere anyway, <coughs> you see. But we just want to position us. Us is going through a lot of change. Us is going through a lot of change. And we want the change to be very pervasive. Yes, sir. Mr. Chair, good afternoon. I would like to acknowledge everything you've said here. Um, I think it's good we give some kind of remuneration to the board members, but then also we should take into consideration the depth within the club. As it stands now, we are coming to run a roadmap where we will clear all the depth. So I would like to suggest that since for about six years, we haven't been able to declare any dividend or pro profit. Um, the board members should continue working for free. Honestly, they should continue working for free. So we are able to, as a club, so we are able to declare profit and also a dividend for every shareholder. That's my suggestion. Mm, thank you very much. But uh, let me say with all due respect, though, I mean, if you understand how businesses work, you can't say that. I'm, I'm the founder of AWA. It looks very profitable. Founded in 2010. I've not made one CD dividend, AWA. So it's, it doesn't work like that. You see what I'm saying? You won't say because you don't have dividend. In any case, House of Folk may not pay dividend for some time because we have to clear the debit balance on income surplus before we can pay, okay? But I would be happy to propose that board members of House of Folk are paid nothing, and not only now, even in future. I'll be happy to propose that. Because I said they, 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 they don't get those monies anyway. You understand? If you want to do things, but you want to do things properly, like somebody said, you want people, you want people to be able to hold people to account, you have to remunerate them. It just makes sense. I, I, I feel shy to go anywhere and say that, oh, our board members are not paid. Will not be, will not deserve even sponsors' uh, backing. Will not deserve it. You, you mean you don't pay your board members? When I, when I first was on, on, on when, when we first started AWA and I was on the board, because I go, please, 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 can you listen? When I first, when, when I started AWA, I was on the board because I was chairing things. The board was not being paid, but one new board member came and said no. He has never heard of a company that did not pay his board members. So if that was the case, he would not be a member of the board. That's when AW started paying some token board, uh, uh, board allowances. But you cannot say that no dividend, no, it doesn't work like that. A class of folk may not be paying dividend now, but please, 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 can we listen? Hello, Chief, please. A class of may not be paying dividend now, but if you have done investment before, what matters, me personally when I invest, what matters is not a token dividend. What matters is appreciation in the value of my investment. That is what happens. That's what serious investors look for. Father, you can buy a company today at one city and sell tomorrow at two cities. Eh? Not that you buy a company today, one city, they give you 10 percent, 10, 10 percent dividend. That's not what serious investors want. Look at all these, uh, all these football clubs in Europe. How many of them have you heard paying dividends? 
How many of the football clubs in Europe have you heard of who are paying dividends? But when the clubs are up for sale, they ask for higher monies. So that is what you should be proud of. What, what did you, do you remember what we bought the house shares for per share? How much? 50 pesos. 50 pesos. You think we'll sell for 50 pesos again? You, you bought house shares for 50 pesos, is that not it? I bought for 50 pesos. Shall we sell 50 pesos again? No, that is what serious investors look for. You understand? When we do the flotation, we can decide to price our shares at a, a different price altogether. That is where you begin to get value appreciation. And uh, let me, I mean, we're all learning here, you see what I'm saying? When you invest, that's what you should look for. The fact that you buy the thing at two cities and you can sell it for 10 cities, that is what matters more. Is the value appreciation that can make you rich, not the token dividends. But anyway, so somebody should move as then we just move it so we can live here. I don't think we can keep board members or you go here because of paltry allowances. So can somebody Okay, then I, I go back. Okay, uh, can I move? Can I propose a resolution that House of Folk board members are not paid any allowances and, 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 and no monthly fees? No, no, let's, let's, do, let's go by that. You are not getting dividends, so House of Folk board members, no remuneration. No, no, let's do it that way. No, 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 no. But that's what I want to insist on. Yeah. Uh, for the motion, for the motion. House of four board members, no monthly allowances, no city allowances. No, 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 no. no Mr. Chairman, Benjamin Mills, a shareholder, and I agree that uh, we should agree that free things sometimes are expensive and then it doesn't augur well for an entity, as our chairman has said. Uh, the 500 that's Chairman is proposing is actually poetry. Okay, and I mean, if you are trying to transact business with a company and it says that it doesn't pay its shareholders, you will even wonder what the, oh sorry, it doesn't pay the directors, you wonder what the directors do. Do they actually even meet and do some work? We've even been informed here that either to the directors were not meeting regularly. Sometimes some of these things could be part of it. It, it doesn't show seriousness. So I will say that we should agree that the director should be paid a sitting allowance of 500 cities and then a monthly allowance of 1,000 cities. Please, let's agree to that. And on that note, I hereby I propose that motion. Thank you very much. Benjamin Mills Papo. Uh, Mills Papo. My name is uh, Ibrahim Zedu, uh, AKA Chuck Norris. Uh, I've seconded the motion. Thank you. Okay, so we have a motion on the, on, on, on the floor. We have a thousand cities monthly allowance and 500 cities city allowance. Will those in favor indicate that by raising their hands? Thank you very much. Will those against do similarly? Thank you very much. By unanimous decision, the shareholders have moved that uh, directors' fees and allowance be as follows. 
the fees raised to 1,000 cities a month, the allowance, city allowance, 500 cities uh, per, per, per sitting. Thank you very much. Shall we move on quickly and close so that we can uh, go and enjoy the rest of the day? And the next item for that matter is the reappointment of our directors. Sorry, auditors, 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 auditors. As I had said already, the auditors have done quite a good job for us. You know, once uh, the, we were out of the various uh, problems that have made our work difficult, they came together all hands on deck and make sure our accounts are up to date. In fact, I'm now, as I know, the accounts are being audited for the last financial year ending uh, June 30. And I think it's just fair to allow them to at least uh, continue maybe for next year and hopefully subsequent years. Of course, they already are auditing the accounts that we'll be receiving for the February meeting. Okay, so I would want to um, I would want uh, the board to be authorized to review the mandate of the auditors. Okay, for the year ended twenty twenty three. That's the accounts they already are auditing. Do you understand? Yeah, so we want uh, a member to please rise and move for the review of the mandate of the auditors, Pagderon and Associates, for the year ending June 30, 2023. I mean, by reference, you understand that the shareholders have the authority, the right to review this on a yearly basis. So this is just for this current audit that is going on. At the next shareholders meeting, we have a chance again to review, okay? So the member rise and uh, <coughs> authorize the board accordingly. Good afternoon, fellow Bobians. Good afternoon. This our auditors have got the pedigree they have been doing this for a long time. We have known them for a long time. So this one is not, we should not waste any time on this. So that I pray that or urge our colleagues to give them the nod to stay on and work so that we can do another way. Thank you very much. You have moved. You moved, okay. So I've moved. And I'm your running. Name, your name, your name. She Mohammed Al Hassan Musa, PO Boss 101, Akimoda. Okay. Okay, so the board is hereby authorized to. I'm sorry, the, 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 the motion there on the floor is that uh, the board is authorized to, you know, review the mandate of the auditors, you know, for this um, uh, financial year. Will you remember? Second. Okay. Your name, your name. All those in favor? All those against? Wonderful. Also carried unanimously. You know, typically, the last item, the last main item, that's a special business, eh? Typically, I mean, uh, even like the company's code, you know, when uh, you have to do a rice issue, you don't generally need a, a problem of shareholders because it's being offered to all of us. But in, I mean, to, to, in, in, to, res, to show respect to the shareholders, the board wants a rice issue, but they want the shareholders support for that rice issue, okay? And uh, we need to do a rice issue um, that would enable us to clean the poor class of folk and position us well for the future. Okay? 
I mean, when we first proposed rice issue many years ago, if you recall, we proposed 60 million. Is that it? The last time we did rice issue thing, it was 60 million uh, Ghana cities. But then the, do the city to a dollar was about uh, maybe, f maybe four cities or less. What is it? 4.5. Now the city to the dollar is about 12. Okay? So if you look at the equivalence of that, we talk about 150 million, 150 million uh, uh, cities roughly. Is that right? So what I, I, I want to suggest is that uh, the, 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 the more money you can raise, the better. Is that right? I would want to suggest that uh, the shareholders give the board the mandate to raise 50, 120 million Ghana cities or more. 120 million Ghana cities or more. You understand? That's one. But the mandate will be such that where shareholders don't want to invest, the company should be able to offer the shares to others who want the money. Does that make sense? No matter in a rights issue, because you are the shareholders, so that you are not cheated, you are given the chance to buy your proportionate stake of the new shares. So if you own 10% of the new shares, you can still buy 10%. You are offered to buy 10%. But if you don't want it, it doesn't mean that the company shouldn't raise the money. The company should be able to offer uh, the shares to others. Now, you know, we said that uh, House of Four shares are available for sale over the counter, not necessarily Ghana Stock Exchange. But the market has not been, has been non existent, either because nobody is willing to sell or nobody has offered to buy. I had a call from uh, the MD of the Ghana Stock Exchange the day before yesterday. That was on, uh, at least, Wednesday. Monday. I had a call from her actually yesterday. They want to reorganize the over-the-counter market, that's the OTC market, to be under the control of the Ghana Stock Exchange. And it's asking that they want House of Folk on the market. And so that's good news, because we want House of Folk ultimately on the main market. So those who have House of Folk shares can sell and can buy. You see, it's like when you own your own business and there's no market for the shares of your business, you don't know the value of your company because the share has no value. Unless it is, it is traded, then you know that this is the price. What we want to do in future is to encourage active trading in House of Four shares. So in House of Four shares, you can sell, you can buy. So I, I told her that, well, we will be happy because we already want to apply for us of four shares to be on the main market, okay? So it being admitted preliminarily on the G Grand Stock Exchange organized over-the-counter market is good news for us, you know? So I just want to let you know that, you know, the prospects for trading in House of Four shares are going to be very, very good. So you can buy and sell, just like you can buy and sell a, a man new shares on the stock market, okay? And I will be happy to have that happen because then when the share price is going, you can be happy your value is going up even if you're not getting dividends. So that, that is just uh, to give you an, 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 an understanding of where we expect our shares to be, okay? So, I think that we should be raising minimum, you know, 120 million cities. You know, that will hopefully, um, that will clear all of our debts and probably leave some money for the 80-room hotel that I want to build. 
So that's the whole idea. The eighty room hotel is important. The stands around uh, um, um, the mini stadium is important. You know. So unless somebody wants a bigger a bigger minimum, that's okay. Um, anyway, uh, let me put let me put it. So the suggestion is that uh, I was saying uh, minimum 120, but the idea is that we better peg it to what we wanted to do at first. It was 60 million. The city has lost value. That's the million is about. You said it was what 4.5. Well, the suggestion is that we should do the equivalence of the same million today. Does that make sense? I mean, the richer our club, the better. The richer our club, the better. You look in, uh, you look at Europe. The richer clubs, they do better. Because you need to pay your, your 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 staff. You need to pay your you know. Are we clear? Anyway, so actually, we actually. We actually intentionally left this for discussion, you know. And the suggestion from somewhere is that we should peg it to what the the, the city dollar rate is. And when you calculate it, the equivalence of the 60 million that time today is 160 million Ghana cities. So that's what I would suggest: a rice issue to raise. 160 million cities. Okay? But where the rights are not subscribed, they will be offered to those who are not shareholders. Yes? Let's, let's, let's hear any suggestions, please. Thank you, board chairman. My name is Vicentia Kafri Deku. Um, okay. But I'm a place, um, the last AGF that we came, uh, I think you offered that there, there will be opportunity to open a fresh uh, uh, flotation, yeah, the fresh uh, shares. And then later, you will do this, I think 30%, this 30%, somehow, I think that's what I had. So I would just want to ask, 
that is, are we going to still open the fresh one or unless we do the right issue before coming? Okay, to you me? remember something like that, that's correct. What we decided at that time was the following. We wanted to raise 60 million, okay? But we said we will do 30 rights issue, meaning to existing holders, and 30 to non shareholders, okay? Why we said that was that we wanted it to all happen at once so that there's 30 for non shareholders, there's 30 for shareholders. Okay? If, one, if we're doing that today, it will be 80 for shareholders, 80 for non shareholders. Okay? But what we are proposing is this, it's almost the same thing. The, the 160 is to existing shareholders. But where they don't accept it, non shareholders can take it. In, in theory, it looks like the latter one is longer because when it's only when you will reject that it could be offered to new shareholders. But the way you do it in practice, so it doesn't take longer, is that you offer the 180 million, 160 million to current shareholders, but you ask non-shareholders who want to buy to also apply immediately. So whatever shareholders don't take, then they can take. So let's keep it as a rights issue, 120 to current shareholders. But with the mandate to the board to offer the rights that are not taken up to non-shareholders. So that when we prepare the prospectus to sell the shares, we'll make it clear that non-shareholders who want to be shareholders can apply. But they don't get to take it until current shareholders don't take it. Does that make sense? So let's do it as a one thing, a 160 million Ghana City price issue. Okay? When we do the prospectus, we'll state clearly how much of that would go for debt repayment, how much of that could be invested in hotel, how much of that could be invested in um, the stands, and how much will be available for other operations. Okay, but this is just a broad approval, but the prospectus will be done beautifully. That will define everything, and that will have the latest accounts as well. Yes. Is, is trying to clarify when we open the offering we can say that shareholders have maybe six weeks to accept or decline or to accept where non-acceptance means declining so after six weeks we take stock of what we've received then what we haven't gotten subscribed we we'll go to those who have submitted the applications and they will, normally when you buy shares, you provide the money with your application. Those who would want to buy would require them also to submit application and money. If they don't get, the money go back to them. But when you don't take your shares, they take it and make the money available. I mean, if we're able to do this successfully, House of Oak would be quite, 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 quite solid no debt, you know, we have um, uh, our, our hotel, we have our uh, stands, and we will be in a very, very good shape. You understand? You know, so when we start the process, we'll let everybody know the House of Ocean is available, okay, so that what others don't take. Even, of course, we'll let Hof Hoffenheim know we are doing a rights issue. We'll let them know we are doing a rights issue. We'll encourage them to also apply. Whatever is not taken, so we'll make sure that it's successful. We'll make sure that we'll raise the money. That's only the 120, it's only about how much million dollars? Maybe 14, maybe 13, 14 million dollars. You know, 13, 14 million dollars. That's small in football, in today's football. But we'll make sure we, we raise it. 
We'll make sure we raise it. You know, we'll make sure we raise it. You know. We'll make sure we raise it. So, any, 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 any other comments? And then we put that, um, we, we ask someone who is, a, is, is, is satisfied, happy with it, to move a motion for a resolution to raise 160 million cities through a rice issue. Thank you. What's the name? Daniel Nate, Mr. Daniel Nate. Mr. Daniel Nate. Any second? What's the name again? Now I put the motion to vote. All seconding, all approving, all in favor, thank you. All in favor, all against, thank you very much. It's been great. Uh, we have another unanimous approval of a resolution to raise 160 million Ghana cities in a rice issue. I think. Uh, we are, that's, the, that's the special business of the day. And with that, I would say that uh, it's time to engage shareholders on any other relevant matters that anybody would like to discuss or ask about. So the floor is now open for all those questions. Again, I would say you should kindly raise your hands and be called to ask your question. And those on the virtual platform should kindly also pose their questions, which will be read out to the board to be answered. Any comments, questions? Mr. Comey, yes. Good afternoon, Chairman. Good afternoon. Uh, my name is James Comey Botsley, and uh, I have three issues that I, I would like to have a clarification. For the last three weeks, I've been going to Povyman almost every day. And there are certain things I've seen which I think would not help the playing body to perform. The first thing I saw was that in the White House, they had difficulties getting water. So when these players finish training, they have to go up and down fetching water to have their bath. The second issue is also that uh, I think the aim of bringing these players together was to make their lives comfortable in order to perform. But then I was taken to a room where it's supposed to be a canteen where food will be served. But then this particular uh, canteen is not in use at the moment. So when these boys finish, they had to go outside the area to look for food. Sometimes they go as far as to China more to go and buy food, which is also not good. The third issue is that we have the astroturf and the three natural grass uh, fields. But honestly, the, the grass fields, only one is fashionable at the moment. But the, the surface is so hard that the place when they move from the astroturf to the grass field, they have the risk of getting injuries. And I can tell you confidently that a lot of our players are playing 
with painkillers. And I think it will be better we focus on these things in order to help these guys actually perform. Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, uh, let me ask a question. Are, 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 are the pitches that they go and play on at the other places softer? I'm just asking a question my own and just my own knowledge. I mean, the, the pitches that they go and play at, at other, other, other venues, are they softer? Well, the reason I'm asking is this. We can make them play all pretty much, every match on AstroTurf, but they won't play at Astro, Astro, AstroTurf elsewhere. Do you get it? We were conscious of that. They can play every match on AstroTurf. You saw when Wafa, Wafa was in the league. They will win on the AstroTurf, and they will lose away. That's what Wafa was doing. Is that true? Anyway, so, but so, sorry, it's okay, it's okay. Once you go there every day, when you observe things, don't wait until today. I mean, you are able to call me. You see what I'm saying? When you observe things on a regular basis and you wait until next year, AGM, I mean, it may not be very good. You understand? So when you observe things like that, you know, you, you um, uh, let us know. I mean, there was this, this other suggestion. Uh, you think, I mean, I'm just asking you guys. You think we should feed our players every day? Apart from salaries? You know, it's not easy. We are trying so hard. But we need to appreciate what us is doing. We try not feeding them once a day. You see what I'm saying? We try not to feed them once a day. You see what I'm saying? But I say, let's feed them three, day, three times a day. <laughs> Nobody's saying where the money is coming from. They think, well, let's just spend. You see what I'm saying? Us is doing very well. We should accept that. You see? Otherwise, you may end up letting the players think that they are disadvantaged. When many of them know they are not. There's a player we signed. From where he came and what he's in, he has to work now 13 times. You get it? Not 10 times, so 13 times. You see what I'm saying? You know, so let's encourage our players to work very hard. You know, sometimes you, we can that, they make them feel, oh, they're supposed to be fed three times and they're not being fed. Meanwhile, you came from a, a, a salary level and you are now 13 times. But then we can make you feel disadvantaged and then, you know, you, you get my point? I mean, look at some of the things Kotoko was going through in the past. Even recently, salaries not paid for several months. If he has a folk, we hear all kinds of ugly noises and insults. You see, I'm sure Anasha pitches are better than many of the pitches out there. But the question for me is, we could make them train on AstroTurf only, but when they go to natural pitch, they may flop. That's why recently we said they should also train on the natural pitches as well. You see what I'm saying? And you see, it, particularly their performance in Tamale was not very good. That's the first match, you know. Even though we didn't win the last match, I heard the performance was quite an improved one, you see. But thank you for, very much for your observation. But the canteen issue, that's the point I want to be. Can we feed them three times a day after paying them salaries? The answer is no. You see what I'm saying? You know, but we, we, we are, it's something we are still thinking about. As for the young ones, maybe the little ones, they have to be fed like they are, they are, they are in a boarding school, boarding house. The academy, the academy ones, the young ones, you see. So these, these are difficult things, difficult things we are, we are debating. Then it's, so that's good. so we, are, we are looking very close at the catering issues. But for now, I've accepted that the regular players can have one a day. But we are looking at general the catering issue. It's not, it's not really easy. You see. You understand? So now they are fed once a day. You see. Once a day after the salaries. You say salaries are current. Do we owe salaries? No. We don't owe salaries. I don't know how many clubs will fit in this category, not owing salaries. But we are trying. You see. Hello. Yeah, I mean this water thing. You know, the coaches have raised it. You see, and and, and it's been so. But we make you know, my house. Sometimes water doesn't flow on the top floor. My house. You see, what I'm saying. So some of these things happen. 
You know, we are in a difficult environment. I mean, I'm sure many of you are in similar houses where you don't get water always. But we are trying. We have the boreholes. We already have how many boreholes in Pobiman? We have three boreholes in Pobiman. You see, you know, so we are working hard on all of these matters. But the coach, for example, has mentioned this so many, many times. And the problem was that it was somebody's house. We couldn't just go start digging, cutting walls and all. The person insisted, and I'm sure you have heard it, the person insisted that he wants his own plumber to come and solve the problem. You see, so he delayed us. At one time, I had to him, just let's go and do it and damn the consequences. Because I heard this too many times from the coach. You see, you know, so sometimes we have to careful how we present some of these problems. Maybe the water is flowing downstairs, but it's not upstairs. I mean, of course, by Ghanaian standard, it's not too big a deal. <laughs> there are times I go to my bathroom, water is not flowing. I call security and say, please bring some water upstairs. You know, because maybe at that particular time, the pump might function or something. You see, so we are working hard on these matters. The coach has mentioned this water thing many times. And Haji has been on the, on the, on the, on the, on the landlord's neck. You know, at times got so frustrated that it was being present as if we were doing nothing about it. If it was my house or his house, our house, if it was some a building we put up, it should be solved like the, the, the same day. But the coach, the, the the landlord was difficult. That he wanted his own plumber to come and deal with it. So it was like there was not water at all, or only it wasn't flowing. It wasn't flowing upstairs. You see. That's it. We try hard. We want to make our people live like, you know, but it's not always easy. We don't have 100% control of the environment. You see what I'm saying? So that's how I'll respond to the pitch issue. We know. At least you can see that the board is aware from what I've answered. The pitch issue, we know about it. The water issue, we know about it. The canteen issue, we know about it. And again, there was a suggestion we, we should feed them three times a day. We said too much cost. You see what I'm saying? You know, we have had such a difficult time as, as a club. I mean, we, we spent more money on hotels, I believe, than most clubs. We go to camp, even in the park, go to camp for home matches. Home matches, so we take them to hotels. Now my, our thinking is that, hey, now that we've got all of them at Pobie Man, why do you take them to a hotel? We should come them where they are. And somebody ensures their discipline. You see, there was a day we took them to camp in a, that uh, Labadi, Labadi hotel that we normally use. They come there, they went to the stadium. Chelsea arrived from Berekum that morning, spent some time resting on the bus, since one time walking around, they beat us. <laughs> they came straight from Berkum to Accra, got here in the morning, spent the rest of the day walking around, relaxing their bus. On the pitch, they beat us. We came from a hotel <laughs> where we were fed well, slept well, everything. So we try. You understand? You know, anyway, thank you so much. A a any more? Yes. I want to know the update on the Phobia for Life drive. And if the supporters liaison officer is appointed, and what is his role and what he's doing to organize and make sure that the Phobia, Phobia for Life agenda is successful. Thank you, Thank you very much. That's, that's, that's also a very good uh, intervention. But very quickly, we have uh, employed a young man who is working with uh, the current staff to, to organize it. Uh, we've seen uh, great proposals that are going to be implemented soon. We're even trying to recruit to aid the effort, national service people, national service people who are phobians, because they will be cheaper and would we'll unleash them on the various uh, companies, and then uh, they'll be actually soliciting directly Membership of Phobia for Life, so we are working on it. You know, I mean, you remember in my address, I said we had actually employed three professional uh, marketing people. You know, we try, but sometimes the results are not are not coming. You know, so but, but we are working on it. Thank you. 
Uh, my name, once again, is Muhammad al -Hassan. He was one when I came out down. Before the shares were enlisted, we, we, we amalgamated the company's code and the club's constitution. And in it, Those organizations are represented on the board. When we go to our, 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 our annual report this thing today, you could see that Miss Ivy Moss is representing the house ladies. The house ladies is still functioning. When you go to Mr. Nyahuta Makulu, he represents, he represents the Council of Patrons. But the Council of Patrons is not there. We are not seeing the Council of Patrons. I'm bringing this because uh, my successor, Horoya, Ali Horoya, he succeeded me as the national organizer. He said he wanted us to be one. We should come together. So our old wadis, who are supposed to be the Council of Patrons, are still there. You can name them. The Atua Hawaii's, the NSBD Akons, they are all there. So as a club who wants to become one, at least this council of patrons must be recognized before a rep comes here. So far as it is here that, uh, it is written that Naota Makro is representing the council of patrons, the council of patrons must be there. And the last but not the least, the national chapter committee's rep. Sometimes I see people call them board members. But in our constitution, which we took there before it was amalgam amalgamated, he is a supporter's rep or the NCC rep at the board. He is not a board member. He is an NCC rep at the board. That is where he's, he's even an attorney general, a registered general. So if there is a problem within the supporters, you know, and then one is asked to go, whether he resigns or is asked to go, the NCC should be resting too so that they replace him at the board. Because it needs, even says that if an NCC member who is at the board and he goes to a board meeting and on three occasions he doesn't report back to the NCC or the supporters, he is automatically taken off. All is there because, I'm saying this because that day the company's code and the, the, the class council was amalgamated and before the shares were taken. So I'm here pleading to the board, especially the board chairman that so far as we want to uh, work at a great path, at a one path. The board must make sure that the Council of Patrons is reconsidered because they have no power. They are just an advisory board uh, 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 body. You can either take their, 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 All right. their listen or not. So, and then the NCC too. As I said, in the House of, House of Constitution, NCC chairman or a, a, a member is not a board member. He's a rep of the supporters at the board. So okay, when there's thank you any so much. problem, I'm begging that either the NCC is written to, or if the board sees somebody who is a, a what should I say? Okay, okay, well, I, I get you. Thank you very much. Yeah, thank you very much. L let me say, you know, the, some of the, what we wrote, some of what is written here, I would say that there were mistakes really. Uh, to represent someone means the person must actually ask you to represent him. You know, when we were the board of us at the beginning, you know, we picked Madame Ivy Ewald Mills. She was a council of patrons person. Okay? So it was like trying to bring, the, we didn't ask the council of patrons to, to nominate her. But we thought that she was coming from that angle and being a lady, she can represent the lady's voice. Do you get an idea? She can represent the lady's voice. The ladies didn't appoint, they didn't select her. We nominated her because we thought she could represent the lady's voice. The same way Council of State, uh, sorry, Council of Patrons, again, we thought we, we another, another, another a male from there, Dr. Nathan Mekulo, you know, coming from that, that background. Not necessarily, you know. So yes, in reconsidering the board, okay, we can look at those who can represent various shades of opinion. But the, the, the regulations as it is, does not entitle, you know, patrons must be there. No, it doesn't. In the new, the, the consider we, 
the constitution that was okay now it's supposed to be called constitution but when at that time we call regulations the regulation of us of folk copy of which i have here does not define those representations okay but in, in restructuring the house of folk board we would bear all those things in mind to make sure that various shades of uh, opinion can be can be represented thank you very much yeah. thank you mr chama yeah, once again my name is ismaila uruyali My name is Ismail Uruyali. Yeah. I think looking at the club future, as of folk is not as of folk is not only a football club. Looking at the registered, it's read Accra has of folk sporting club. That means we have the variety of sports that can be named under Accra House of Folk. So the board the board chairman has put in it before is that we have a basketball club at Pobima. We have what courts. We have a tennis court. We have a lot of sports discipline center. Does that mean that in future we are going to adopt those sports activities into, into the company? Because it's a sport, it's not a football club. We just okay. read it. Accra also folks, sporting club. Okay. It's yeah. not a football I, club I, I alone. Agree. I think that, that when you are right. Yes, the when various sports, sports activities have to be, have yeah. to be included in future. Okay, That's thank what you. I'm trying I to I think do. When, the, yeah. when the founders of Us of Folk name is Sporting Club, they expect that it could spawn other sports activities. Exactly. That's why the name is Sporting Club. Exactly. But so far, it's always been football. football yeah. At least now, we have made the academy a sports academy. Okay? All I can tell is that nothing is impossible. Particularly in the way of progress, nothing is impossible. I, I can say I will guarantee, but I can't guarantee. Why I will say I can guarantee is that definitely one day all these things will come in. Sure. Particularly now that we are coming closer, we have a basketball court. So it's easy to have a basketball team. We have a tennis court. It's yeah. easy to have a tennis team. We have a golf course. It's yeah. easy to have, have us of folk, uh, a golf team. golf team. So all these are possibilities. Sure. That's all I can say. These are possibilities. We cannot exclude anything. Who thought we have a ladies' club at this time? But we have it. You understand? So all I can say is that these are possibilities. These are not something one can assure or guarantee to happen within a certain time. Just, yeah. But Just for now, the facilities are there. Our players can enjoy it. Okay? Visiting teams, officials, and players can also enjoy them. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. Our players can get bored playing football. They can go and play uh, volleyball. Even I hear volleyball can be a good training for exactly. players. Football, they exactly. can kick the ball above the net yeah. instead of with their hand. So help in improving passing and all of that. So the answer to your question is that these are possibilities. Thank you. Thank you. And of course, because of that also, we are thinking of the name Hearts Africa Sports Academy. So it's not Football Academy, but Sports Academy. Okay? So the formal name will be adopted by the time it's all done. We even are thinking on the possibility of a separate company owning the academy. But that company will be 100% owned by Accra of Folk just to promote greater efficiency, make it a complete revenue and cost center. So it could be Has Africa Soccer, sorry, Has Africa Sports Academy Limited. You understand? So that, that's about it. And by way of information though, if you, for, 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 for to clean it out, House of Folk is now House of Folk, Accra House of Folk, Sporting Club, PLC. Because by law, since you are a public company, we should now adopt PLC and not LTD. That is not by us, not by me, but by the law. So we are now has a class of folk, sporting club, PLC. Uh -huh. Sadly, we maintain the limited here only because at this time it was still limited as opposed to PLC.
public limited company. Thank you all very much. I think we've come to the end of the, um, the meeting. And I would like on, the board, on the behalf of the board to thank all of you for what I, would, I personally would characterize as a wonderful meeting. And uh, uh, we've been able to address all issues, hopefully to everybody's satisfaction. We're going to pass all resolutions, and in each case, un with unanimity, which is good. Maybe good for the spirit going for a good for the kind of collaboration and unity that we all are uh, aspiring to going forward. So I thank all of you. But let me find out any comments from here, the board. No comments. I'm sorry I had to do all the talking. I should have. <laughs> anyway, so let me once again thank all of you um, for coming, for your patience and your tolerance, particularly when we were late. Okay, I want to assure you that definitely we'll call another board meeting, a, a general meeting in February, and I will try to remind my finance people that it is in their hands. If we are not able to meet in February, they must have been the cause. So <laughs> now that they've had it, I've made a commitment to you, they must make sure the audit is done before the end of the year. Then definitely the uh, next AGM, February, that would make us shine like a very modern company. Thank you all very much. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, I think we can do better. Can the applause be uh, louder? About four or let me say five hours of very fruitful engagements. Thankfully, uh, we have come to the end um, of the proceedings. Let me pass this piece of information. So outside, when, you, when you, you step outside, you see that we have personnel from Star Life and they have a product for everybody. They've actually branded the product as Phobia Assure. I understand that it's a very good um, insurance policy. So when we are done, when we um, exit this auditorium, try and speak to the personnel and see um, what's in store for you. Uh, just by way of summary, in terms of um, the decisions that have been um, finalized here, don't forget that, I mean, for those who may easily forget, the auditors have been maintained. The remuneration for board members is 1,000 cities monthly and then 500 cities um, sitting allowance. Also, 160 million rights issue. That is what I was able to capture. I believe that we were even able to um, capture more. On that note, we would call Mr. Johnny to do us the honor of the closing prayer, ladies and gentlemen. Please put your hands together for Mr. Johnny as he uh, takes us home. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. 
ya me ma haso fu kwadin kunim me mpa abo ni se ye wura to gba fede woni na pamfu e board members utu fu yakopon wo mo mo football enkunumu na misri yakopon se wisdoma ki solomon ya me di manu no wo fa ma ye wura to gba fede na pamfu no mfa ra ne haso fu misri utu fu yakopon haso fu a fi enye ya fe musio ni ese be ba timu ya me wo fo nko po aja Shiranya shiranya dumo wo football nya mfa nom house of folk me sira supporters abu tre nya me won fa maye ball be house of folk be bo e di penche penche be ba e wa fi mu ni fi e to e ni urade fo ko po ja maye shiranya dum be wo football mu nkunum die nya me me sign paja africa said e hu e kan e no nya me me hu e sa fi so so nya me wo shira yi nyina e sira dum fo nya ko pon obi e nya me di mu na ba ha ye ko fie nya me o me anti kokonua nya me fo obi ko ru fie aso die mu nya me o hira meeting e e so na e sire o tu fo nya ko pon february na pani fo propose the meeting no e je mbesa ba so o nya me wo ma ye nkwa entra musio e sign or how apinisie yaro dom e be ba aso fo ku maso titiri yegura to go afede mi sire o tu fo nya ko pon wo fa ko po ja ma ye nya me moto go afede hunu mu na wo hye ne de ni nya me ma na botre woni the board members tu fo nya ko pon sha wo modi na mo ma botre na wo lidi ni padom a ti se wo abotre ti na misra botre de amba ye wura to go afede na pon fo nya me wo hira no wo nya de kese na de kese yoro so bi se ha so fo ku nyina bismillahir rahmanir rahim alhamdulillahi rabbil alamin ar rahmanir rahim maliki yawmiddin iyyaka na'budu wa iyyaka nasta'in ihdinas siratal mustaqim Sirat al-lazina an'amta alayhim ghayru al-maghdubi alayhi wa ladalin amin I thank you very much and um, this is just um, for 2 seconds so it's in respect of phobia for life if you want to um, register kindly see the gentleman at the technical table for registration thank you very much it's been a pleasure uh, good afternoon bye bye